it becomes positively beautiful, which is why in poetry, the theme of the evanescence of the world is beautiful. It's always the image of change that really makes the poet. You let the other side be the other side. And it evokes something in your imagination, but you don't attempt to define it, to pin it down. You do.
Well, hello, everyone. See a few people in chat. Couple. So we've got J420 with the uh, four month uh, of subs saying this J or Brian. Well, we're both here, so. Uh, both. Take your pick. Yeah. Yeah. Por que no los dos? Uh, Langerlandi, I can't stay for the live stream. We want to say hi. Well, hello to you as well, sir. Hopefully, you're enjoying your day. Uh, Blue Note just subs. Yeah, very true. Blue Note just subs Twitch Prime for 11 months. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Nice, nice. 11 months, that's crazy. 11 months. Not bad. Not bad. Oh. Uh, just our pre-show as usual, guys. Try to go live a little bit early to make sure everything's working all right. We'll get into the show officially in about five or six minutes. Just like to make sure you guys are doing okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's what we're here for. And that I don't have Jay muted, which I don't. So no, here. you don't say that. Off, off to a great start so far. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan uh, Lion 100. Ryan Lion. That's a great name. I love that. that Ryan Lion. Yeah. Twitch Prime stuff. Thank uh, and, you so much. Uh, George69 as well with the uh, three months of subs saying epic. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Who controls me6? That go.twitch link is old. The go what is go.twitch? Is that mobile? Uh, no, it's um, it's the, the link that the me6 bot puts into uh, the Discord whenever we go live. But yeah, DMC's right. That is a really old link. It, um, really? We'll get we'll get Sashimi to look at it tomorrow because he managed to all that. Yeah, it should just be twitch.tv forward slash top pack. So you get rid of the go dot. Oh. You don't need the, the precursor. Does it does it change anything though? Does it actually matter? Does it hurt? No, it's the... just an old link. So it, I think the risk is eventually at some point that will be discontinued and then it won't work anymore. Oh, so okay. we should fix it and move it to the new that's, what it should be. Yeah, that, that's a that's an incredibly easy fix. <clears throat> Yeah, it gets forwarded at the minute. Uh, oh yeah, DMC yep. says it gets forwarded. But um, yeah, I, without anything like that, it could get turned off at some point. <laughs> it's probably the same link that we've been using since we started the Discord about two years ago. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix it. We'll yeah, fix we'll, it. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Not a big deal. Thank you very much for putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we're just a little behind the times, you know. It's, it's just the way we are. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. TKC crew represents. We got a bunch of the TKC crew in the house. Yeah, I think see. so. I think we've got... Uh, I think I've seen uh, Blind Assassin. Very nice. Um, one Creative Mind as well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I knew Jason said he was going to tune in uh, if he could. I don't know what his, uh, his Twitch name is. It's Mike Concho. Hunter oh, right, is spelt okay. with a zero, if I recall. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we, we, we do have a bit of a giveaway, but we'll talk more about that momentarily. Yeah. Once we, uh, it's a good giveaway, though. It's a... It's a any, yeah, man. Dude, any, anytime we get to give away a key set, that's a pretty good giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I see Ryan Lyons uh, said that he's uh, he is space once. He's the guy behind the little 2U uh, milk um, 2% macro pad thing that's really cool that I still really want <laughs> oh oh Ryan Lion is yeah yeah that's what oh, he's posted here. very cool very cool yeah that's uh that's making waves right now in the community I feel like everyone's talking about it it's, it's very adorable it is really cute yeah. and it is on our news doc for today's episode uh one creative mind says hyper seven group by when I need something for my ferris kit so when I joined top I cancelled a few projects I had on going and I actually gave the hyper seven rights to mech boards in the UK so they've got all of the PCB files they've got all of the plate files um, they've got all of my original case designs that never got produced or whatever else and all of the other stuff uh, so reach out to mechboards.co.uk uh, they are going to run it at some point but I don't know when um, it's kind of out of my hands now but yeah they own all of the rights to the my PCBs and everything else I designed so yeah well the Yankar design that I paid for but. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough I didn't do the I can't claim I did the design myself but I uh, yeah, I gave him a lot of money to do it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, Lunar Sama subs at tier one, sixteen month streak. Thank you very much. That's a very nice, healthy streak. Nice. We like streaking around here. 
Uh, the region Asia also uh, on a 16 month streak at tier one. Thank you very much, Ray. It is indeed, yeah, yeah boy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Ray also says it's Happy Floof Day. That's well. true. Yeah, it's uh, International Cat Day or whatever. I should be <coughs> using my cat profile. What am I thinking? Okay. In the UK, it was uh, it was Cycle to Work Day today. Or on Thursday, was it was technically Friday now, but it was Cycle to Work Day. And uh, someone said, uh, did you cycle into work today? I'm like, no, I didn't. And they said, oh, you should have done it. It's Cycle to Work Day. I'm like, yeah, but I live 111 miles away from where I work, so I'm not going to cycle that before I do a shift at, at work. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little bit of distance to cover on a bike. Yeah, I was like, if I did that, I'd be in for like half an hour, and then I'd be setting off back. You know, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be spending nine hours in the office. Uh, Merlin says, "Cat filter on Twitch now." Is there a way to do that? Do you do the cat filter on Twitch? I have no idea. If if you have a, a simple, casual way, I can do that right now. I totally will, Merlin. I'm I'm all for supporting International Cat Day. Just like I'm really excited <laughs> to support International Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> just, just download a sketchy exe. Oh, yeah. Sketchy Yeah. When is that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Talk Like a Pirate Day is in September. It is on Thursday. I don't remember which Thursday, but it is on a Thursday. So. Yeah, uh, I, I expect do remember me, uh, that. Expect me to attempt doing the episode like a pirate at least. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be trying to force Jay into it, but I don't know how well that's going to go. <laughs> I'll have a go. But you heard my pirate expression a couple of weeks ago. It, it, doesn't, like, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be good, though. It's just... It, we, everyone already expects us to be bad at most things, so... <laughs> oh, really? Okay. okay. <laughs> we, can, we can get away with it. It'll be, it'll be all right. That's fair. <laughs> Nebulant, the British don't really like pirates. No. That's very true. <laughs> oh man, it's face masks. Four a.m. Easy on... face wow. masks on Streamlabs. I'm not going to tinker with that now, just because we're live. That's well, not... yeah, you can. Yes, you can do it on Streamlabs. I have seen that before, actually. Yeah. Huh. I don't actually know. <laughs> oh, I found the face mask setting. I'm too afraid to do anything live because I'm not. I don't know what's going to mess up the stream and what's not. Go on, just have a have a try. I'm What's just, the worst right, that could happen? Right, in five click, minutes readjusting stuff, right? I'm gonna click the face mask setting and see what happens. Um, <coughs> face face mask masks enabled. Let me turn that on. Video device. Pick my camera. Mask duration twenty. I'm assuming that's seconds. Must be. Uh, there's no like place to select masks though. I don't know what this really means. Hmm. Test face masks. There's none to test. Feels bad. Maybe I have to download them separately. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I have seen the setting on there, but I've never played with it. Hmm. I, I tried. <laughs> I, I, I somewhat tried. Sorry, I guess. You gave it a brief go. Gave yeah. it just a, just a brief. <laughs> just, a, just a little brief go. All right. We're a little after six now. I'm going to roll the intro, and then we're going to officially start this parte. Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's episode of Top Clack. I am your host, Quakums, joined, as always, by my co-host, Jay, the lovely British presence you see sitting next to me. And today is Top Fact Day, of course, Thursday. It's uh, my favorite day of the week, and we have a lot of fun things to talk about today. We have a pretty healthy news doc, as has been kind of customary lately, um, as well as a little bit of a giveaway, which we'll talk about momentarily. But Jay, mm, how yeah. are you doing today, sir? I I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I am kind of daunted by the size of the new doc, because it basically means I'm getting no sleep tonight, right? So um, it's going to be 5 a.m. before I even finish on here, and then... What's the point of even going to bed at that point? So uh, um, I'm interested to see how long the show ends up being today because there's a few things to talk about and there's there some are. exciting stuff to talk about as well. So it's not just uh, not just the topics that we've got from from the usual sources to talk through. There's also some, some other stuff, giveaways and everything else, as Brian's hinted at that we want to talk through as well. So yeah, I think uh, lots to get through. Yeah, uh, but first, shout out to two QT to be. 
Oh, I get it. Too cute to be straight XX, just subbed on Twitch Prime. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very <laughs> well to work that out. Very. It, it took me a second, but it's a pretty pretty elaborate username. But I respect. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have just gone with too cutie. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. That's how I would have probably done it. I just kind of well done and working out. I'm kind of a completionist about weird things, and I feel like if I don't, if I I have to try to understand the username. Because it seems like when you start saying it, like 2QT, like you know, your brain knows that there's there's more going on there. There's more to this puzzle. Right. Okay. Okay. Confuses yeah. you. You read into things more than I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <are>. <laughs> <laughs> Great comment. That's awesome. That is freaking awesome. I, think, I do think you deserve Kakan's A plus for the effort for actually reading 2QT's name as well. So yeah, I, think, I think that's a, a, a around the loop. Absolutely. Love it. Um, Sophia Wolf officially banning Clavier from top clack chat starting now. What? What did he do? He called. He said, "Hey, furry." Oh my gosh! All right, we're we're just okay. gonna we're gonna go ahead and ignore <laughs> Let's that keep over that quick. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we're gonna do a, a, a brief mail call as we usually do, and uh, this this is a very interesting mail call week because Jay, who uh, generally has everything that the world has to offer coming in on a weekly zero. basis. Big fat zero going on here. Mm -hmm. Double double zero. <laughs> but I yeah, actually nothing, have a few things. Good. Yeah, go for it. What have you got? Which is, which got is really interesting. Things, yeah. yeah, so yesterday my GMK <laughs> Minimal showed up, which is pretty awesome. I'm still kind of deciding on what board I want to put this on. But really happy about this. Checked it out. It looks freaking amazing. Love the simplicity of it. Um, mm -hmm. And also, Z Frontier emailed us a few days ago, and they wanted to send us... A set of Cam Starry Night, um, which is a key set. You might have been seeing some pictures around lately. I think it's been shipping somewhat recently. But uh, really interesting looking key set because um, it has a very glossy finish to it, which is kind of strange, especially for a, uh, a PBT set. So um, I haven't really played around with this set too much. I just got it in before the show. I haven't. I, I took it out once and glanced at it, but... Um, I'll play with it a little bit more later, but really excited to kind of check this out because as someone that has really, really, really enjoyed Cat Profile, um, Cam, just being the uniform version of Cat, I think I'll, I'll like it at least somewhat, and uh, really anxious to see how the glossy texture feels when I'm actually typing on it. So I think yeah. I'm going I'm going to attempt to do a stream tomorrow. I have no idea yet what I'm going to do. Literally no idea. But I think I'm just going to turn on the stream and maybe we'll do a couple uh, couple keyboard chores. I'll unbox the Cam Starry Night. I'll put it on a board. I'll talk a little bit about it because it's it's very different from a lot of the keycap sets that we have on the market today. So anxious to try that out and uh, maybe I'll take you guys along for the ride. Yeah. I do want to call out as well that I could have sniped you and I could have had that delivered to me. And I, I was a gentleman I, and I, I saw, gave them your address. Yeah. yeah. I'm still yeah. a little bit annoyed with myself about that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're a nicer person than I am, so yeah. <laughs> That's just. I suspect you got there first. You'd have done this. You wouldn't have done the same thing. You'd have just had it to you as well. <laughs> I... No comment. No comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also got um, some Zeal's Islands that were sent to me free of charge. <laughs> uh, shout out to Cyber Sam. He had some he wasn't going to use, and uh, I was looking for nice. uh, the 78 gram, which which is exactly what he had, and I was like, oh yes. So I'm going to put some silence to work. So maybe I'll find a home for those and something tomorrow. But yes, should be a pretty good time. Man, what a short mail call when you don't have mail, Jay. This is so strange. Yeah, the, the only thing I do, and it's on our news doc later on to talk about, but talking about shiny uh, uh, keycaps, uh, I do have the uh, HSA, which we'll, we'll talk about later on. So I know you, a couple of you guys have seen the half SA uh, keycaps. It's on our news doc to talk about later on that uh, my keyboard and JTK have been working with. Um, but I, I've had these for a few weeks, so I, know, I never really shouted out about them as part of the mail call. But I did take them to Seattle so Brian could have a look at them before we yeah. talked about them on stream. But we'll cover that later on. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, a couple quick Should announcements. Some announcements? Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. definitely. Before we move into our news doc, we had a few uh, few quick announcements. So, of course, as usual, the Top Clack Discord server banner that we rotate every week based on the pictures that Twitch subs provide to me in the Purple Chat channel. Um, you know, if you got a picture that you want to see up in the server banner, post it in Purple Chat, tag me. Even if I don't reply, I probably saved it. And I have a, a constant queue that I just reload every single week. So there's something new for the server banner every week provided by Top Clack subscribers on Twitch, which is always cool. So 
Make sure to post that picture. Tag me in purple chat. Easy peasy. Um, our three-year anniversary coming up very, very, very soon. August 29th. So that Thursday will be the official three-year anniversary episode. we got a few surprises in store for you guys as well yeah. as a plethora of giveaways. So it's going to be a really good time. Um, some, either sometime this week or next week's episode, we're going to start all of the forms for the contest. We are going to be rolling out a few different contests. You're going to have to put a little bit of effort if you want to win something really nice. Um, as so it's kind easy. of tradition. Yeah, it's not necessarily going to be uh, you enter and you just automatically win epic stuff. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. It'll be good stuff. There will be uh, quite a few things to give away. But um, like a lot of you probably know, we will be bringing back the Top Clack Annual Song Contest, which has been amazing the last <laughs> two years. It was so, so cool the first year and the second year that we just have to bring it back again. And uh, we usually have some pretty nice prizes for that. And the best part about that is almost nobody enters it. There's like between five and ten people entering that one because no one wants to put in the effort for a song. So if, yeah. even if you enter, like, even if you make, like, a mediocre song and you enter, your chances of winning something really, good really chance, cool, yeah. like, yeah. your chances are insanely high of winning something cool. And we'll probably have multiple prizes for that as well. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. We'll have um, uh, an announcement in the Discord very, very soon. I'm going to write something up either tonight or tomorrow, and we'll work on the uh, the contest stuff to go out yeah. really, really soon. But you'll have time. And just... just, just... Just a point on the song as well, guys. It doesn't have to be the best song, as in who's got the best voice and the best production and stuff like that. It's what we enjoy the most as well. So just just to be clear, we won't. You, you, just because someone who might be a little bit more musical is entering doesn't mean to say that anyone else doesn't stand a chance because we'll be taking it as uh, around the whole. It doesn't have to be you know something that's insanely polished and sound like a track that you could release uh, professionally. Uh, it's all about what Brian and I enjoy uh, and and what we what makes us laugh, what makes us you know have fun, all of that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, so, but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we have all the information up. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> it, it's it's all it's all for the sake of fun, guys. It's not we're not a record label. Like <laughs> Jay and I are just judging the songs how we like them. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, but that'll be yeah. really fun. So anyways, there is that. Look forward to that very soon. I'll tag everyone in the Discord, actually, once all that is finalized so everyone can uh, get to work on what they need to get to work on if they want to enter the competitions. Yeah, we don't do at everyone's very often, but that's kind of something we want to make sure that everyone's aware is, yeah. uh, is happening. So most we'll, people uh, are okay with happen. being tagged if they can win shit, I feel like. Like, most people are okay. That's a pretty fair <laughs> It's like, way oh, I can win keyboards and, like, GMK sets? Like, all right, like, ping me, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Fine, whatever. <laughs> I guess There's I'll have to click this one. There's always that one person that There's always that one person that complains and puts up that, that oh, uh, emote everybody. that's got the, the, the one in the in the red circle, and it's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my favorite thing is uh, when the bot pings for the main episode, and you go to general chat, and, like, three people leave the Discord. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me laugh every single time. That, that didn't happen today. That didn't happen today. One person joined. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't always happen. But it, when it does, it makes me laugh. Anyways, yes, three-year anniversary coming at the 29th. Contests will be able to be entered well before then, guys. We'll keep you updated in the Discord. No big deal. Uh, just make sure you join the Discord, which is linked below if you uh, are not in there already and you want some more info. Secondly, yep. um, we have a giveaway that is going to be opening today. This is not a part of our three-year contest. It's just a totally independent giveaway through Top Clack. Um, for a brand spanking new set of GMK Night Runner, which is a set we'll yeah. actually be covering in our news doc a little bit later today. But we wanted to open the giveaway now. This is courtesy of the key company and a designer, Blind Assassin. So shout out to yeah. both of them for making this giveaway possible and deciding to do it through us when you could have just as easily gone through maybe more professional means. But hey, absolutely, <laughs> we, 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 we love it anyways, so... We won't send it down. Uh, I've pasted the link in chat, guys. If you want to check that out, uh, as I say, this is for a spot on the group buy. It's not it's not ready to ship yet, guys. So it's not a set that's ready to ship out to you. It is part of the group buy. Um, so the uh, just just bear that in mind. It's not something you're going to get tomorrow or next week. It is, you're going to, are going to have to wait for the group buy to run. Uh, but it is uh, it is that Gleam link that I've shared there. I'll share it a couple of times during the uh, during the show as well. So if anyone has missed it uh, or you, you, you lose it in chat and want to enter it later on, uh, then we will post it there. And we'll also paste it in the Discord straight after the show as well uh, but you can just follow the standard gleam um uh, entry methods and uh, and you'll be able to join yep there'll be lots of places to find it in the vod in the chat and uh, in the discord announcements channel after the show so it won't be yep. hard to find but it'll be open for <coughs> about a week so it'll close right before next week's episode of top clack where we can uh, announce the winner there <laughs> and that person will have yep. their free group by spot for gmk night runner if you don't like the set 
consider not entering. Let it go to someone that actually really enjoys the set. That's something I can't say highly enough uh, when it comes yeah, to giveaways. Absolutely. Of course, it is, uh, open, it is open to everyone, though. So. Of course it is, yeah. It is open to everyone. But if it's not something for you, then, you know, you don't have to enter. Just just don't feel like you have to enter it. That's, uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to Talisman for the 1,111 bits. That puts him on 109,999. Um, also, shout out to 159, who we didn't realize this, but I think during the stream on Sunday, he's actually crept into third spot uh, on the uh, uh, on, on the bits donations. So, Zeal, uh, he's about halfway to your target, so I'd, I'd watch out for that. Um <laughs> Uh, but we, maybe we'll see Zeal drop into third place at some point. Maybe it's, it's possible. It's possible. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'm happy with too Yeah. Thank you so much, Talisman, for the the bits. Appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, we do. All right. Should we roll into the news doc now? Yeah. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Great. Uh, first link is in chat. Bam. There we go. Okay. So this is the interest check for the B eighty by Geek Maker. This is a 80% or TKL, depending on uh, maybe your philosophical bend there, which is a, uh, a pretty standard keyboard that comes in at a pretty low price. So this is a five degree angle keyboard. The PCB is gonna be QMK and USB-C. There's going to be sort of a magnetic badge system that you can kind of see in this picture here. Um, yeah. Or, <clears throat> which is I, I thought was kind of interesting. I'm going to try to find a better picture for it because I know they have one. Here we go. So there's actually a little yeah. bit of a, a part of a PCB. I don't know if it's a daughter board or if it's actually part of the normal PCB under here. Where you can put a switch and supposedly two SMD RGB LEDs over here on either side of the switch. Um, yep. If you don't opt to do that uh, Geek Maker or custom nameplate. I do believe the badges are customized, which he says right here. So uh, maybe you can kind of get your yeah. own thing going on there. Effectively, you can put a two U switch in there, so you can uh, you can put a stabilizer. Two, uh, if you use a transparent stabilizer, you can put the LEDs on or not as well. Uh, you can put a switch in there, and you can use it for artisans or whatever you want to. Really, um, it kind of half covers up the the, the, the structure of the case on the side, um, but the badge is really interesting. Yeah, uh, um, pe people are saying it's actually available on uh, the KBD fans Taobao page already. So I guess uh, maybe, is, maybe the interest yeah. check is a little out of date. This was posted uh, four days ago. And the interest check it is, section. Yeah. So, so there's actually a hundred of these boards already for shipment. So there's actually a picture somewhere in the uh, in the thread I saw earlier on today where there's uh, there's a hundred of these boards already boxed up and stacked up and ready to go and ready to ship. So, um, I think you're right, guys. I think calling it an interest check is probably a little bit of a misnomer. These boards are already produced, ready to go, um, and uh, in stock effectively. Yeah, but we decided we wanted to touch on it a little bit anyways, just because it's kind of absolutely it's kind of an interesting board. So. Four millimeter integrated aluminum plate. They do have the cutouts for stabilizers and for switches to click in, of course. Uh, pretty yep. standard stuff. Um, it also comes with an aluminum hard case, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. But the really most interesting. interesting thing, I thought, was actually the price. So if you get any of the anodized versions between red, gray, or black, it's $169. It's pretty good. That's. I mean, it comes with... You know, a PCB, it comes with a hard aluminum carrying case, and it comes with, you know, stuff like, features like the, the badge system, customizable badge, for $169. Well. That's actually a really good price. It is. It is. It's integrated play, which does make the production cheaper, uh, as we've seen before. Um, and I think there are winkyless and uh, and normal layouts as well, so you can pick a winky or soul up. Uh, layouts or, uh, or or not, um, but as, as I said before as well, the interesting thing about this is a side profile is technically a seamless design. It's kind of where the uh, the inside of the case and the top fits over the sides of it and covers it up. So it's one that we've seen before on uh, on a lot of designs as well. I think uh, we saw it on the profit and a few other things. It's becoming more and more common. But we're starting to see a lot of those high end design features now filter down into the low end again, which is one thing that Brian and I are really you know happy to see. Um, so it's interesting that this is uh, this is at the price it is. I think it's a very competitive price uh, very for, competitive. for TKL. Yeah. yeah. This would be one of those boards that you could probably just buy your friend to bring them into the community and it doesn't break the bank, but it still shows people that uh, you, know, you could have a decent product that doesn't completely cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, absolutely. It could be a great work board or somewhere where it doesn't matter too much about, you know, something ha being at risk from being taken or anything like that. It's, uh, it sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's move on to something that a lot of people have been waiting for, including myself. So this is the <laughs> this is the group buy for the Polaris, finally open, and oh my gosh, have I been waiting for this for a while now. 
I know a lot of you yeah. guys have been as well. So, bam. Polaris open. Gasket mount. Seamless design. 60%. Starting at $250. That's the starting price, guys, depending on your configuration. So, yeah. very, very low introductory price for the feature set that you get here, which is pretty darn vast. Yeah, it's worth calling out that this is uh, one of the, uh, the cheapest gasket mount boards we've seen. So this does have uh, a true gasket mount solution uh, where you have isolation on the top and the bottom of the, uh, the plate. Uh, the PCB as well is also quite interesting. So for those of you in Seattle tried out the IDB60 that has a 1.2 millimeter PCB rather than 1.5. This also has a 1.2 millimeter PCB. So that's really interesting as well, um, which does tend to mean that you need screw and stabs rather than clip in just so you can get them nice and tight on the on the PCB itself. But more interesting than that, the PCB actually has a flex slot cut into it as well, or, or consistency slot as uh, some people like to uh, to call them. Um, and effectively what this means is it'll uh, dampen uh, the, uh, the, the, the tight feel and you'll have two different parts of the uh of, of the pcb moving um so again i think in terms of build streams we've uh, we've seen that on the profit when we built that a couple of months ago um so interesting to see again all these top end design features filtering down to the cheaper end of the uh of the boards um yeah, it's, uh, it's looking really good. As well as that, it also you can also pick from a regular full top, a HHKB, or a wing keyless top. So there's multiple options from there. Uh, case colors, black, space gray, blue gray, burgundy red, forest green, rose gold, purple, polycarbonate, uh, E yellow, and E white. All those three are extra cost, but they are available as well. And all of them come with a brass weight and a choice of plate as well. So in terms of your plate options, you can pick either brass, polycarbonate, or FR4, FR4 being PCB material. Uh, you can have wing keyless or universal. So if you use uh, uh, ANSR, you can pick if you want the wing keyless one. Or if not, you can pick the universal one if you use something like ISO, for example. And then all of those plate options come in half or full plate as well. So right at the very top, when Brian was showing you the pictures of this, uh, there's a picture of uh, a red board with a full um uh brass plate and then there's also a polycarbonate half plate as well so you can see that the half plate just covers the mods all the way around the outside of the board uh, and the number row and then all of the alphas on the internal uh, side of the board there uh, there's no plate supporting them at that point yeah really really excited for this one um you know besides the pcb and plate which are already looking pretty awesome um there are so they also are going for this kind of like foam kind of implementation where they keep the foam between the plate and the PCB and then again under the PCB. So you're getting <coughs> two separate foam pieces, one that's going to be sandwiched um, around your switches between your plate and your PCB and then one that's going to go in the bottom of the case. So this is going to result in a very quiet and much more dampened typing experience. So yeah. between, uh, between the foam and the gasket mount, I would expect this to be a relatively quiet board and probably have a very clean and precise sound as well. So yeah, I'd be really interested yeah. to try this particular board out with the you know a louder, more obnoxious switch, maybe something like Holy Pandas, just to see what kind of difference that uh, the foam and the gasket mount together can make for that kind of typing experience and sound. Yeah, and I think the good thing about this is uh, it's it's a board that. Um is cheap enough that you could probably buy a couple of uh, extra PCBs and plates to do different builds with it. So you can test all of those kinds of things if you want to try linears on it, or if you want to try tactile switches, or if you want to try the foam or no foam, you know, depending on how you want to build it, it seems like there's multiple options there. It is worthwhile calling out as well, and I've just pasted the link into chat for this, that on the image you can see that whilst it does have the foam that sits between the plate and the PCB, where it sits in there it only covers the alphas, it doesn't cover the modifier switches, so the modifiers aren't covered by foam. Um, I couldn't find a better picture of it, but uh, it is worth calling out. Um, I'm just scrolling through the... Uh, uh, yeah, so in fact, actually, there's, there, there is a better picture of this. Let me just paste this on here. So if you scroll down through that interest check on there, Brian, uh, through the group by page on KBD fans. Oh, there you the go. Picture. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so you can see there that the, uh, the 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 foam in between the plate and the PCB doesn't necessarily cover all of the modifier keys. It doesn't cover the top row, as far as I can tell. It doesn't cover uh, some of the functions on the bottom row either. Um, so and it doesn't cover the uh, the the full. Uh, shift key on the left hand side as well from the, you can see from there. So it is really interesting that the foam doesn't cover all elements underneath the uh, the plate. It only covers mainly the alphas. So Very, very interesting. Yeah. I think what they're trying to do is avoid having foam anywhere they've got stabs. I think that seems to be the intention. Uh, and I think Melodex just paste, said that in chat as well. So um, yeah, I think that's a good chat, Melodex. I think that's, that's possibly the intention. Uh, 
we'll see how that works. We'll see how it works. I think uh, we need to try this with and without foam to uh, to see what that's like. Yeah. Um, I yeah. I mean, I know you've already bought one. I'm going to probably have, be yes. buying. I'm going to be buying one. Um, it's possible we have some kind of unit on the way at some point to hopefully check out. Um, yeah. But you know that stuff like that's always kind of up in the air. But uh, regardless, one thing I thought was kind of cool here is you get to choose your um, your kind of your your surface finish of the the brass, whether you want it. Um, well, I guess not the surface surface finish, but you get to choose whether you want um, a clear matte PVD or a matte black PVD on the brass weight and plate options. If you uh, decide to go for a brass plate, at least, but on the weight, you'll definitely yep. get a choice there. Um, I wish they had more pictures showing the black PVD. There's only one that I could really find that's kind of uh, easily accessible, and that's um, right here, if I could click it. There we go. Um, you can kind of see it from the internal there, but there's not really any pictures that I could find from the back. I think there was maybe one from his Discord. But uh, it'd, be, it'd be kind of cool to see more pictures in the group by thread for this. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, just shout out to Melodet as well. Um, pasted the link to actually the, uh, the the foam product, so you can see that it does only cover certain mods as well. That's a really clear picture of it. So thank you very much for, for posting that. I'll open that one right now. There we go. Very go. So very interesting. The... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's just trying to avoid anywhere where there's a stabilizer, uh, effectively, and then the right hand side uh, where all of the other modified keys, which is where the most of the stabilizers are anyway. But I think that's what it's trying to uh, to aim to do. Cool. Very, very cool. All right. So, yeah, that's open now, guys. Jump in on that. It starts at 250 That's if you get B configuration with an FR4 plate. Uh, it's going to cost just a little bit more if you want um, a non-FR4 plate. If you want brass or polycarbonate, it's going to raise it to about um, 265 I believe. It's $40 for most of the plates. Yeah. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, $40 for most of the for 40, yeah. $40 for brass, uh, 30 for polycarb, and 25 for FR4. So um, between yep. 250 and $265, depending on what kind of plate you want. And that is if you go with the anodized colors. If you go for polycarbonate, that's going to up the price about another 20 bucks. And if you go for either of the E coatings, that's going to up the price uh, $40. So pretty, pretty good uh, range of options here, especially for the price. Um, yeah, this is one, one thing I'm kind of sad to see is there's no renders of what the yellow looks like. I was kind of hoping to see that. I probably wouldn't have bought it anyway, um, but because there was a lack of that, uh, he I, does I, have I, one. Pi he has a one or more pictures of it in his interest check thread of this. Um, oh, really? It, okay, it, it's just yeah, that. That, that didn't carry over to the group by thread or the uh, the group by page in any way though, which is kind of unfortunate, but. Yeah. Regardless, I think this is. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This, I think, this is going to be one of the board of the year contenders for me. Um, it's just so much value. It's so much like nice aesthetic design and attention to detail that I think this is going to be a real winner. And uh, you know, this is one of those yeah. boards. I think people are gonna if they if they miss out on, they're going to be pretty bummed about it. I, I genuinely think that one of the most interesting uh, and exciting collaborations at the minute is AIO3 and KBD fans because you know he's looked at the uh, the AX and the KBD67 as well, uh, as well as multiple other projects for for Way. Uh, so you know to see this this board come to life here at this point, you know it's exciting. Uh, as you said, I've already bought one. I bought it as soon as I saw it had gone up. Um, I didn't want to wait. I went for the forest green one, so I took a chance as well because I've not even seen the forest green either. So I did take a chance on that. Um, That's but, the color uh, I'm going to get. Darn it. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, well. Ah, we'll both have yeah. green boards. Whatever. We'll have green boards. Yeah. If we get a review unit, hopefully it'll be a different color. We won't get a green one. Yeah. All right. Anyways, make sure to check that out. It's up on KBD Fans now. Um, it, it's going to be open for a little while longer. I don't think it closes for, I don't know, what the rest of the month. I'm trying to find that information now, actually, because I forgot to look. Yeah, it's open for the month. Yeah. The month, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, pretty amazing looking product for the price. Looking forward to checking one of these out. Next up, Absolutely. we have the interest check for... This, this, this is a tongue twister, kind of. The Ogre Ergo. You have to really think about it before you say it. Um, which is a pretty strange looking keyboard coming from Control-Shift-B-A. This is the user. And yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to find a better picture that shows this in the... More of a horizontal way, but he doesn't really have a lot of great pictures for this. So I guess I'll just default to the first one here. So 
this is basically an ergodox esque style layout that he kind of wants to make a little bit more keycap compatible, if you will. So a lot of you guys, if you yeah. use ergodoxes uh, or know people that use ergodoxes, you've seen them before. They are not very friendly when it comes to keycap compatibility. You need very specific keys to actually properly outfit an ErgoDox. This is why we see a lot of key sets these days, um, particularly on the GMK and uh, SP side, um, support ErgoDox assembly kits um, as an individual independent kit from the base kit. So you can just buy just the ErgoDox kit and that'll fill out your ErgoDox. You don't have to worry about extra keys and stuff like that. So... Yep. He's kind of taking a different twist on it, and this is not the first time we've seen it, but this is the first time we've seen it in quite a while, where people kind of want to make it so they can use more standard keys. So the idea here is you can get an Ergodox-esque experience with just your normal GMK base kit, for example. Um, yep. So you have all your kind of standard modifiers here, standard size stuff, which I think uh, is pretty cool, and I think it looks all right as well. Yeah, I think the, the, the way he starts his interest check is quite fun as well. So he starts with Ergo Keyboards, overpriced, boring, hard to find keycaps for, ugly, but not anymore, not today. Today is the day a beautiful new Ergo is born. Soon you can cap it with your favorite sets. The Ergo form factor is revived, introducing the Ogre Ergo. Um, so I thought that was a really interesting way that he'd, uh, he set up the, uh, the IC. But as you said, Brian, it's a really interesting take on, on those kinds of uh, uh, ergo boards and, uh, and how to lay them out. And we've seen attempts for this before, but I think this is probably the more interesting of one. Um, in terms of this, he's, he's trying to lay out in the interest check what his, uh, his design philosophy has been and why he's gone on the, uh, uh, the journey to do what he's done. Um, and it seems to be driven by a couple of things. So it's been designed to make uh, an ergonomics that's easier to put caps on, as Brian said. Uh, it's designed to be covered at most of all of the popular GMK base kits as well. So using just keys out of the base kits. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to solve the legend problem. You're going to have incorrect legends in places, but at least the keycaps will fit and they'll give coverage where they need to do. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thought on it. In terms of the specifications of the board, uh, it will be QMK compatible. Gives the builder options on split versus non-split, so you can actually have it as two different parts or not. Uh, outer column caps and all base kits should be covered by GMK. Uh, single Pro Micro, if you have them together, you'll need two Pro Micros if you do have it in split. Uh, the PCB is not reversible, so it won't be one PCB on one side and the same PCB flipped over on the other side like some Ergo boards are. This will be two individual PCBs. Uh, there's two levels of this. Uh, so this is the Ergo, uh, the Ogre Ergo Waif, uh, and there's also the Queen version later on. So this is the uh, the kind of uh, cheaper version, and he's looking to do a CNC version later on. So that's uh, that's something that's not in, uh, in in plan just yet, but it is something that he's going to sort out later on. So there's no uh, more details on what the CNC version will look like, but it's something that he's going to work on. Uh, you can also uh, uh, have underglow. Uh, there's no RGB per key, and there's no hot swap available unless you want to use Milmax sockets yourself. Um, and uh, it needs to be. He also designed it to be uh, easy for a first-time builder to solder uh, using the Pro Micro, and everything else is through hole soldering as well. So it's dead easy to put together. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen, I did a gingham build quite recently on stream, which is really really easy to do as a through hole board. So there we go. Yeah, and he does have um, hand-wired protos that he's showing off in here, but there, of course, will be a PCB, and it will require Pro Micros. Um, if you do have the normal version here, which is kind of just one board, you only need one Pro Micro, but there is going to be an option to split it. Um, I was yeah. showing off one of the pictures of the PCB. Actually, I'll find it again real quick down here, where basically you can uh, leave this hole, or you can just snap this PCB right here in two. Right and then enough, you can yeah. have your split board, or you can have it just a single board. But if you split, you will need two Pro Micros for that. But uh, yeah. it is all through hole because he'll have, um, I don't remember the, the actual term for it, but the, the kind of through hole parts for the Pro Micro. Pretty, pretty darn yep. simple. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of the layouts, there's a couple of different choices you've got as well. So uh, just to leave to Brian is just, uh, some layout choices. Uh, so you can have the 70 key, which requires an extra 1.5 modifier, a one point, uh, sorry, an R3 1.75 control key, and an R4 2.25 shift. Uh, or you can have a 68 key, which is just the standard TKL keys only as well. Uh, so you can see that there's a couple of differences, very small between the two uh, two layouts. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the the colors that this is available in, if you pick the wood one, you can paint it yourself and 
paint it to match any keycap set that you'd like uh, as well, which is uh, advertised as a selling point, which is quite interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, it's definitely something that a lot of people consider. I know a lot of people like to customize stuff um, and make it their own. So you could go absolutely crazy with this. You could do hydro dipping, painting, all sorts of different things and kind of world's your oyster with this level of entry uh, entry board, which is really good to see. Yeah, for about $100 for a kit, I feel like this is this is pretty good value here if you want to try out something that's uh, Ergo Doc <coughs> style, but uh, you don't want to have to buy specific kits or you know individual Ergo Docs kits from GMK sets, for example. This should work with a lot of the uh, existing sets that you might already have. Yeah, absolutely. It looks really good. I'm I'm tempted to get one just to see what it's like and to try it out, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's cheap yeah. enough to where I'll probably pick one up, too. Um, just to, I've always kind of wanted to swap to Ergo Docs, just like just to see if I can do it. Because last time I tried, I gave up after about ten minutes. Yeah, but uh, I think I'll struggle with it. But I, I want one just because I think the board looks interesting. It's something fun to do and fun to build and have a go with. Um, so I, I like it more for the project side than necessarily as a usable piece for me personally. But I can absolutely see why people would want to use something like this. I think it looks great. It's almost, in some ways, it's almost this layout and the way he's put the boards together. It's almost Alice reminiscent, the way it's got that kind of V in the middle. Um, it, it, it kind of does strike me as, uh, as being that whole kind of separate and uh, stylistically very similar, although it's a completely different take on it in terms of layout. I kind of like that as well. Yeah. I mean, Alice is all the rage right now, so I, I think people... People trying to, you know, copy or steal inspiration from um, <clears> things <throat> like the Alice. We're seeing a lot of that in the community right now. Like, just look, think about the Seattle meetup that we were at. How many different Alice uh, clones and spinoffs did we see there? Oh, so many. yeah. Just eight or nine, I think, different versions of uh, Alice clones, spinoffs, uh, modified boards, all sorts of stuff that was really interesting to see. So, yeah. Yeah. Could be interesting. And speaking of interesting, let's move on to our next topic, which is the interest check for the 2% Milk, an utterly spectacular macro pad. Which is, uh, yeah. This is, this is just way too adorable. <laughs> it's very adorable. So when we when we called out uh, this, I think we covered it a few months ago when round one was shipping, uh, and I did shout out to to the royal and said I really really wanted one of these, um, and uh, to Spaceman as well who was uh, who was looking at this. I think he's in chat. I think it was that Ryan line. I think that yeah, was his username in chat today. Yeah, I think he, he's the guy behind this as well. Um, but I'm just excited to see this come back. Uh, I was hoping there's going to be some extra so I can pick some up. Um, it turns out that there's now an R2 instead. I think that's just because interest has been so high because these are super, super cute. Um, so I'm just really, really happy to, to see these. So uh, just in terms of a few details, uh, these are manufactured by Mr. Slippery Pete, uh, who is also in chat. I'm pretty sure I've seen him talking earlier on today. Um, Ryan Lyon, uh, who is in chat as well, he's uh, he's posted it there. Uh, he ran the original uh, group by and R2 has been run by Royal. Uh, so that's great to know. Um, and then uh, Royal as well. And uh, PCB is designed by the legendary Pyro, who made the original Alpha 28 keyboard. So lots of people who've been really involved in the community doing other projects coming together to make something fun something cute something desirable something that a lot of people are going to like as well so uh really excited to see this um yeah, yeah. so what, i mean what do you think Brian? Do you like this I, yeah i mean it's it's really fun right it's whimsical it's fun it's adorable it's it's hard not to like something like this especially because it is priced relatively well um this is going to be about 25 dollars plus shipping for the kit and that'll include uh a fair amount of stuff. That's going to include your 3D printed case, your PCB, your Pro Micro, a few mil max sockets, just in case you want to make it a little bit more hot swappable if you want to change out the switch a little bit more. It's going to come with yep. some stickers, and uh, th I thought this was actually really interesting. It comes with <laughs> inner switch plate foam from MK Ultra. So there's there's switch foam <laughs> in between uh, the uh, the the switch here. So that's. It's always weird. This really cracked me up about the uh, the recent what is it the ISO avail or whatever, where it yeah, has yeah. you know a, a top mount polycarbonate plate Carbon for, a, plate, for a, yeah. a single key keyboard. Something about people bringing <laughs> things that they would normally use in much larger keyboards and porting them down to one or two keyboards, one or two key keyboards. I think is just absolutely hilarious, and I always want to see more of it. 
I so. I'd agree. Yeah, I'm I'm really sad I missed the first round of this. If I'd have known it was happening before it happened, I would have uh, absolutely jumped on this. I think you're absolutely right, Brian. It's it's great to see. Uh, interestingly enough, as well, there is also a bit of a post on here saying giveaway news. Uh, they will be giving away five free milk kits uh, thanks to the beautiful community that made this crazy project possible. Uh, and full giveaway details will be announced when round two group buy opens for orders. So watch this space, guys. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Yep, definitely. And I... I mean, these are these are just too cute. Like I, I like uh, these community pictures here. The third one, this guy uh, he has it like an orange juice uh, kind of box instead of milk. So he's got yeah, it's great. He's got like some orange caps and a little orange juice sticker on it, and then there's like a little milk one. Like it, people get so creative with it. It's it's just it's fun. It's really really fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I did see that uh, Langlandia had done one for uh, cafe as well. Um, so, so I think it was like uh, kind of the idea of having cream with your your coffee. Um, yeah. And I did see one as well on Reddit the other day where someone had put like a little missing sticker of uh, of a Lego man on it as well. Because I know you guys in the states you have uh, missing persons on on the back of the milk cartons and things. So uh, I did see that someone had done that as well, which I thought was quite quite interesting, and quite fun. Oh man, that's that's just great, man. That's just freaking great. So yeah, be on the lookout for this because you know it's it's very inexpensive and it's very fun and playful. And I think we need more of that kind of stuff in our community. It doesn't always need to be super serious, you know. Yeah, no, I think this is great. I think fun little things in the community. This is this is great, especially when they're so cheap and it's a stocking filler like this. You know, twenty twenty five dollars is you know. It, it, it's not going to break the bank. It's easy to afford. It's something fun. It's a bit of an afternoon project when it comes in. Uh, things like this keep people engaged in the community, and uh, you know, it, it's something that will act as an entryway to for, for other people when these start to get out there and they're all over, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all places like that because people have got these cute little things. People get interested in the hobby, and it's it, it's the fun things like this that drive a, the community to be as great as it can be. To be honest, so yeah, yep, absolutely. Can, can't say enough good things about this to be honest myself so yeah i'm i'm excited to get my own <laughs> yeah speaking of great things in the community how do you feel about upas over at canon keys uh i i feel that he's a very very attractive man um he is significantly more attractive than i was expecting to be and i was kind of uh, kind <laughs> of shocked dangerously so dangerously so in a good way yeah anyways he is doing an interest <laughs> check for his chimera 65 which uh, is a pretty awesome looking board that's going to be hitting the market soon. And we were lucky enough to be in Seattle with him and this prototype around the meetup. Yeah. And it was freaking awesome. This board was so, so awesome and so cool and so unique. And uh, I'm really excited to actually see it hit the interest check and more so to see it actually hit group buy. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so for, I think we talked about this uh, on the show last week, and I think you talked about this with one fifty nine on the we touched uh, on it, Seattle yeah. recap stream as well. So, the day before the uh, the meetup, uh, UPass was kind enough to come around to our Airbnb uh, and uh, bring this board with him for a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, and he did talk to us about his inspirations for it and, and where it came from. So, there's kind of a lot of uh, different boards that have inspired this over over time. Um, so, in terms of like. Uh, when you look at the dual weight design on the base, that was inspired by the Jane CE. Uh, there's the logo in the top right-hand corner that was inspired by the TGR 910. Um, they expanded uh, keys for the arrows. So they, they exploded uh, arrow keys and uh, right 65% uh, modified keys. That was inspired by things like the CA66. Uh, the board's got a lip all the way around the edge, which looks really, really nice in this uh, implementation, uh, which is very reminiscent of the old TX boards, LZ boards, and also recently the QXP as well. Um, you know, so, so, so there's a lot of different inspirations that have gone into this board. There's a whole curvature on the side, uh, a profile of the board as well, very reminiscent of the uh, uh, of the old Dollinger boards and uh, and things like that as well. So, so lots of different design inspirations have gone into this. Sometimes that can end up looking not so great when you try and mismatch loads of different design ideas uh, and cram it into something new. Uh, but honestly, I think UPass has pulled it off with this one. I think this I looks great. It was one of the highlights of the meet. I think it's super successful here. I, I think a lot of times people that only draw inspiration maybe from one or two products and they, you know, they implement that on their own thing. And it kind of looks like a very similar version or sometimes even as far as a copy itself or a clone. Um, but here he's drawing inspiration from so many things that it really does become its own unique thing. Like you, you don't look at the Chimera and go, oh, this is just like the X or Y or Z. No, this, this no. is unlike everything else but it has has parts of so many other boards. 
So I, I think uh, he had he had a really good medium here on drawing inspiration while still uh, having that retain its own individuality. Yeah. So just in terms of some features, then uh, just to recap before we uh, before we get into some more detail on the board, uh, it is QMK and VIA compatible with PCB. Uh, it has a center USB-C unified daughter board as well. So like a lot of modern boards, this doesn't use an integrated USB connector on the uh, on the PCB. It has a separate daughter board for that. Uh, it runs on ARM chips rather than uh, on the old Atmel things. Um, so that's uh, also a positive uh, change. Uh, South-facing backlight LEDs, uh, pour on gasket isolation sandwich mount. So this is uh, uh, fully isolated all the way around on the top and the bottom of the plate. Uh, pour on feet as well. So they aren't in the, they weren't on the uh, the prototype, but there will be pour on feet for the base as well. Um, so you won't see those in the images, but that will be available. Uh, 7.5 degree typing angle. 10.86% uh, front height to the ledge. So remember when we looked at the board, it's got that lip all the way around. So as you come up, it could then got a lip and then it comes up again to where the first keycaps are. So it's 10.86 millimeters up to the lip and then it's 17.86 millimeters to the actual uh, start of the keycaps. Uh, it's a seven piece case design, which is insane when you think about it. Uh, there's a top, the bottom, the brass weight, the back piece, which you'll see on here is the red bar that runs across the back. Um, the uh, bottom accent, which is the weight inside the weight, the badge and the plate as well. So there's uh, underneath the logo on the, t in, on the inside, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, a badge in there as well. Uh, and then there's the uh, the plate as well that, uh, uh, that, that comes as part of the machine parts. So there's seven different machine parts for this as well. Uh, the Chimera crest engraved in was created by Hisu as well, uh, but I, do, I, I really love that crest. The fact that the crest as well also goes across two of the different components. So when you look at the weight system, the crest goes from the brass onto the red and then back onto the brass was really impressive. The tolerances for that were, were pretty tight uh, when we were looking at the prototype as well. So, so I think, uh, Brian, I know when we talked about it, that was one of the things you were impressed with and I was, uh, I was really impressed with it as well, how they've done the logo. I suspect what they've done is they've built the board first and put the two weights together and then engraved the logo, but uh, rather than doing them separately, but still very impressive work either way. Yeah, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest that that's at least in the, the proto that we saw in these pictures here, that was the thing I thought could probably use the most touching up here for the actual production line. Um, I think it looks totally fine how it is now, but if you can get the tolerances between this inner aluminum piece and the outer surrounding brass piece just a little bit tighter so there's less of a noticeable gap here, I think it's going to look incredibly clean. I, I, I think that that gap isn't the, the tolerance between the two pieces. I don't think the piece, I think it's just the edge where it's been rounded on both sides. So you're effectively seeing a, a slight dip, uh, which catches the, the, the shadow. I think that's what it is. Could so be. I suspect you'd, ha you'd have to mill them flush and not have those rounded curved edges on there. Um, so I, I suspect that's what it is. But I'll let you pass, uh, tell us yeah. if that's that. I'm just being picky for the sake of being picky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in terms of the uh, the plate as well, just moving on to the plate, the plate is fixed and there's a choice of two. The materials are to be determined depending on the interest check. Now, the PCB also does support ISO. Yay! Uh, but plates will be provided only in ANSI in the group by. So what that means is that uh, UPS will be releasing the plate files. If people do want to build it in any of the layout that the PCB supports but isn't part of the fixed plate, you will need to obtain your own plate, uh, which is absolutely fine. I think that's a really, really good way of running things. Uh, keeps the designer's vision, but then also allows people like myself who use a different layout to uh, to absolutely customize the board and, and make it how we want as well. So uh, fair play to him and props on that uh, on that front. Yeah, absolutely. So color combos are still being decided here. He has a few that he's listed, um, similar to how the. Uh, why can't I think of it? The the Bauer, how the Bauer was run recently, where there's kind of just a few different um, specific combinations that you'll have to choose from, as opposed to um, choosing each piece that you want colored a specific <laughs> way. Like Jay mentioned yeah. earlier, if there's seven pieces to this, and if you're choosing colors for all those, that's like eight bazillion SKUs, and it's just incredibly hard to actually fulfill that as a vendor. So yeah, yeah, uh, he's. I think he's definitely going about it the right way here. Just setting out a few different options you can choose from. That way, there's only you know three effective kind of skews here instead of eight hundred billion. Absolutely, and the the good thing about the community these days is if you buy a color that you're not happy with, it's really easy to get things uh, reanodized, reseracoated 
change the colors of stuff if you want to have things sandblasted back to plain brass. There's a lot of services that are coming out to, to offer that as well. So even if this board doesn't offer something colorway that you particularly like or want, rather than begging you past to have another thousand SKUs, then you can actually uh, go ahead and do that yourself as well. So it's always worth bearing that sort of stuff in mind. Uh, that being said, I think if I was going to pick this, I'd probably go for the dark gray and lilac because that sounds like a great combination to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely. I was going to pick one. That's uh, um, that's one that's uh, there for me as well. Also, shout out to these uh, Seattle meetup picks because in this one right here, you can see the mythical silver brutal sixty in the back. You never see the <laughs> silver ones. You only ever yeah. see the blue gray ones or whatever. But the silver ones, way the better color of the brutal sixty in my opinion. So I like uh, I like that it's kind of just hinting around the back there. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is worthwhile as well just touching on how the mounting style works on inside. So I know I said that it was uh, it was above and below the uh, the plate, but it is very reminiscent. And, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, UPS, but I'm sure you said it was very similar to the number one mounting um, when we were in Seattle that you'd spoken to Raya. Uh, he'd explained how the number one mounting worked, uh, and you'd kind of implemented something simpler, similar to that on this board. I can't remember if we saw the internals or not. There was a lot of hazy drinking going on in Seattle, so I don't think we did. Um, but uh, I am excited to see what uh, an expert view of this board looks like at some point as well yeah would uh, or love, maybe, maybe even a build stream or something yeah. yeah would love an exploded view would love a prototype for us to check out <laughs> so <we can> build <laughs> stream. i'm trying to be like really casual about it but uh yeah it'd be it'd be amazing to be able to check one of these out even uh even temporarily just through a little build stream or something would be would be really really cool yeah absolutely yeah all right so bam shout out to that can't wait to see this hit group by phase um, by the way, the ex expected price is going to be around four to five hundred. So this is targeting that higher end keyboard territory, um, to, which to is be fair when you consider it seven parts. I think that's a pretty fair price. There's oh, a absolutely. lot of work gone into this. Yeah, yeah the, the price does uh, not seem too high. I just don't want people to be surprised when this is five hundred dollars. For sure. Yeah. But it, with with the amount of work and the amount of pieces that uh, are kind of going into this, it totally makes sense why it's that cost. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, dead excited to uh, to see this. Dead excited to uh, to try and jump on the group by, and dead excited to hope one of us gets to build one. <laughs> Ooh, boss, please. <laughs> do we do we? Have we dropped it? Have we dropped it a hint yet that we want to? <laughs> no, I like being really, really obvious about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, let's uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is an interest check for the KY zero one, which is claiming to be a budget sixty percent gasket mount keyboard. This is by user KCK, which is uh, seems to be a brand new user here or account on Geekac. Yeah. Uh, let's let's just let's check out this board here. How do you feel about this? Um, so I, I just before we get into this, I'm going to say I when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, this is really well put together. Interest check. Um, the more I've read about it, the more and the more I've read through this, the more I've realized there's actually quite a lot of gaps in the interest check and a lot of things where decisions haven't been made and things like that. So, so whilst it's nice to see that there's plenty of information there, I, I was I, there is some there is a lot of questions. It, the, the, there's more questions it raises than it answers, I think, at, at some points. But we'll we'll get into the detail on that. So first thing first, it is a gasket mount board. It's a budget 60% board uh, as far as uh, KCK is uh, is telling us. So there's eight gaskets in total, four on top of the plate and four underneath. So it's a two-point mounting system on the front, two-point on the top, I suspect. Um, it's made of aluminium, uh, bead blasted with anodized finish, standard for most boards in the community. Uh, three colors, black, gray, and silver, maybe adding a red or blue, depending on what people want uh, out of the interest check. Uh, seven degree angle, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting because as I said, I'm not sure this has been fully thought out and, uh, and implemented yet. So based on the renders as a base, as a wedge on the base that kind of gives it that angle. Um, but he might make it zero degrees to reduce costs. Um, for me, that's something you should probably have decided before you get to this stage. I, th I think that you know it's uh, it's probably a little bit like interest checks should be about refinement, not changing something that's integral to the board in my head. Uh, no HHKB or wing keyless layouts. Only supports ANSI at the moment, so ANSI layout at the minute. Um, although depending on feedback, there may be an ISO compatibility version. 
it does support a split backspace, uh, but that's the only other change it offers. It doesn't look like it offers any other alternative bottom rows. It doesn't look like you can split left shift. It doesn't look like you can split right shift. It doesn't look like you can have step capsule based on the plate file renders. So it literally just that's the one uh, customizable part of the layout. Uh, designed to sell 50 units, it does not include a PCB, but it supports most left sided 60% PCBs, such as a VZ60. Uh, brass and polycarbonate plates only at the minute. Um, so, yeah. Well, and what, what do you think about that estimated price, Brian? $159. Okay, that's, that's what I was hoping we were getting to next, because $159, yeah. $9, excluding shipping, seems <laughs> ridiculously low. For it's ambitious. It, I, I think it goes beyond ambitious, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I was trying um, to be polite. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm... I, I we can play good cop bad cop. But I don't mind being the bad cop. It's all right. <laughs> um, I mean, but let's let's take it seriously here. We have you know a multi part aluminum case. We have a brass plate uh, with gasket mounts that angled base. This looks like way more than one hundred and fifty nine dollars is going to get you. Um, yeah. So it seems it seems a little odd. And I know you were, we were talking a little bit about it before the show, but uh, if you check out this plate here in this picture, you can see that uh, the the outer parts here, where the gaskets actually meet the plate, these are actually CNC'd out, so they're thinner on the edge of the plate as opposed to the uh, normal 1.5 in the center of the plate. That's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of cost for machine time, um, just to be able to mill all these spots out, and that really kind of drives up the price. So I. I, I really, really, I, I would, I would bet money that he's not going to be able to get down. He or she is not going to be able to get down to um, a hundred and fifty nine dollar price point here, with uh, yeah. without making some pretty serious design changes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Even just stuff like having the gaskets custom made for stuff like this isn't cheap you know i mean it, I, i'm saying cheap i mean it's a couple of dollars per board but when you're doing 50 units it starts to add up and it starts to increase the price and 159 dollars overall does seem incredibly cheap and and brian and i are really really concerned about that price with something like that plate um because as, as brian was saying it is a really really obvious indication of where significant work has to go into the design that is expensive you know laser cut plates are relatively cheap uh cnc cut plates are relatively expensive you know we uh, we, we we saw this um uh, about a year ago with the ANSI, a lot of people questioned the uh, the cost of the plate on the ANSI, and when West Fox Strait explained it and said it has to be CNC cut, that's why the price go goes up, everyone was suddenly a lot more accepting because they understood that, oh, yeah, that's a lot more work, it's not as cheap, it's more difficult to produce, um, uh, and, and so on. So so to have this plate that's got two thicknesses, so you've got the standard 1.5 millimetres where you've got the, uh, the alphas and the rest of the keys, but then around the edge where the gasket goes, it, it looks to be half of that or a fraction less, but you have to mill that difference out. You can't, you can't laser cut that. Um, so it is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, that price pretty much not going to be happening unless there's some kind of weird behind the scenes black magic wizardry that we don't know <clears> about. <throat> um, I KBD fans wouldn't even be able to hit this price for this design. Yeah. If I had I mean, to the, the, so. the only board that we've seen that hits this price point that is what I'd call a custom board uh, really is the IDB60, but that is such a simpler design in terms of its machining and And there's no else. plate. That's yeah, so that that's that that's straight sides. It's angled corners. There's no rounding. There's no bevels. There's no chamfers it, or, or very little. It's just a very much a plain case. And I know Brian, you spent quite a lot of time with the one I brought in uh, to Seattle, but it's 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 a very angular, sharp case design. Right? It, it, it's very easy. It's to the machine. simplest of simple Absolutely. keyboard designs, basically. Yeah. Whereas this has got, you know, chamfers and fillets and rounded corners and uh, angled bases. And then that plate that we've talked about that needs CNC. I, I just feel like there's a lot of work in this board. I, either that or, you know, if, if someone's willing to sell it for a loss, maybe they, they, they want to keep that price and sell it for a loss. That's the only thing I can think of why they'd be doing this. I, um, pretty, but yeah, that, that's, that's a pretty rare scenario, but I, I guess anything is possible. But... That price is a little suspicious. With that said, I do think the design of the board is totally fine. And if they can Agreed. keep it in yeah. a budget realm, like it could be really successful. But it's hard to believe that this is going to actually be in the budget realm. Yeah. And I'll just leave it at that. 
I, I, yeah, I, George has just mentioned it's about a 50 MOQ. I still don't think, if, after doing a couple of runs of boards and things myself, I don't think 50 MOQ you could get this for that price um, at, at all, if I'm honest. I, I think that the only way I would believe that price is if this was going to run on KB Defense, if this was going to run with Way, and Way has got his own manufacturing stuff and he does things in bulk, and it didn't mention that Maxim was 50 MOQ. I think that would be the only way I'd be even considering that that price might be correct. Um, because everything else about this screams that there's but there's, prob- there's too much in the design to to keep the price that low. Yeah, I, I want to know where he's getting that price from. Like, is this a, has he already gotten quotes from his manufacturer? <clears throat> or is this is this just totally a guess? Because I, yeah, I feel like I, I feel like you wouldn't put a price unless you were like you, you thought the estimate was going to be like really close. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Um, the other thing as well is that uh, there's no prototypers yet, and with any board like this, I do like to see a prototype. Most people do do prototypes in the uh, in the current group by Climate. Uh, you know, if you look at any of the other vendors, you pass 159 Wave, and you know everyone does prototyping now. You know, it's kind of considered uh, statutory. It's part of the part of the process to uh, to ensure a good solid group by. Um, after some failures we've seen in the past, um, at the time uh, that I read through this, I didn't see any plans for a prototype. I didn't see any comments saying that that would happen uh, but i'd like to see that it, i'd like to think that it would you gotta, i know a couple of people in chat have asked for it yeah you got you got to have a prototype you don't necessarily need a prototype during the interest check phase but before you go to group buy like you have to have some kind of proof of concept to show people um you know how it works and how well the, the production quality is actually going to come out you can't just blind this and hopefully like have everything work out okay that's not necessarily how this works yeah, the only other way I'd, I'd even potentially believe this is if uh, is if it was just the case and you didn't get the PCB or any uh, sorry plate or anything else, and the plate files were open and people could go make their own. That might make it a little bit more believable. But even then, it still seems incredibly cheap. Um, I do, I do, you know, I do think the board looks nice, as you said, Brian. I think the design's fine. It's I fine. personally yeah. like the uh, the whole uh, base piece on the side. I mean, if you've seen the JL one, it's very reminiscent of this with the uh, the grooves at the side, so you can grab hold of it and the kind of uh, ledge at the back and having a wedge underneath the board. That's kind of my aesthetic. Um, so I think the board looks nice. I think it needs to offer more compatibility than what it does. Um, you know, the, the the bottom row is potentially not what a lot of people would pick in the current climate. I think that's probably an old-fashioned yeah. view of what the, the the ideal bottom row for 60% is. Yeah. More, more people would lean towards a Sangam bottom row these days. Um, so yeah. Well, I mean, the, release plate files. That's the easy solution, too. Um, that's how you just kind of, kind of get away with most plates. You just release the plate files <laughs> and anyone else can get whatever they want. Because we have so yeah. many services in the community now where you can get plates cut uh, you know personally just for you from whatever material you want at fairly reasonable prices so yeah that's not i do think that the, the the biggest change you need to make is that the plate doesn't need to be cnc milled and open the plate files those are the two things that, that are that's true. almost yeah. exclusive to each other because if you release this plate file not everyone has access to somewhere that can cnc uh, a plate file for you laser cutting sure we've got services like laser boost and uh, i know 159 cuts pom plates and things like that so there's, there is other options if you can laser cut stuff but if you need to cnc milled not everyone has got access to uh to to, to be able to get that sort of service done so yeah, so we'll yeah. we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. Maybe it hits group by phase. Maybe it doesn't. Hopefully, they have a prototype by then if they're going to do it. And then, yeah, uh, we'll just we'll we'll hope for the best. But this is a, a little suspicious. But, yeah, it just 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 feels quite not quite there. But we'll see. Yeah. Speaking of things that do seem all quite there, let's talk about GMK Violet on Cream, aka VOC, which is a group by right now over on Novel Keys for a hundred and fifteen dollar base kit. And oh boy, that's a pretty nice base kit for a hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, just before we get into this, uh, just a shout out to the Sweaty Yeti gifting a tier one sub. Uh, that went to uh, Loud of Laughs. So very well done. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. We really also, a uh, shout out to. Uh, we missed I- Iwane, I think, as well as uh, Rumai. So thank you very oh, much, nice. guys, for those subs. Nice. I, th- I just want to call see- out as well one comment that I've seen on here. Uh, so the Pokemon kid, a good friend of mine, Matt from the UK, says uh, on the previous board we were looking for, I could get this for $159 if we swap the material from aluminium to paper mache. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No comment. Right, no no comment. We'll, yeah. No, no, no more comment. We're done. We're done. We're done talking about the last topic. Yeah. Uh, we're sorry. About, uh, just made me laugh. 
Talk a little bit about Violet on Cream. This is a set that we have <coughs> seen in the past um, in essay versions. Yes, I was, have the essay version. Yep. yep. And it was relatively popular, but uh, now coming in GMK version and at what a price, man. $115. What do you think about the base kit compatibility here? <laughs> okay, so a couple of things I'm going to say. So it isn't the fullest base kit we've seen, sure. But we've seen base kits that have less than this in at a high price than this. So for me, this price, $115. And, and we were told that to get to $100, you had to get rid of NumPad and ISO because that added $25 to the cost. But to get both of those included and $115, this is a really, really strong base kit. Uh, in terms of the coverage, I mean, you can cover pretty much anything with this. So you can cover your, your standard 6% in both ISO or uh, ANSI. Um, you can do TKL, you can do full size, uh, you can do HHKB, you can do Sangan bottom row. You, you know, the 65% supports there, 1800 supports just there. Um, there is a lot of opportunity in this base kit. There's uh, a stepped caps options, step control options even in there, which are a little bit esoteric in terms of uh, uh, some of the use cases we see. Uh, there's alternate FJ5 keys, as we always see as well. I, I think this is a really strong base kit for 100 is it perfect? No, there's always things you can add to make it more compatible. You know, you, there's, there's other things that we see in other base kits that aren't there. But the fact that this eschews those to include the numpad probably makes this more accessible and more inclusive to a larger percentage of the market than removing those keys does. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I like that they did here also is they have a purple alphas kit. If you want a, um, I'm trying to find if they have a full picture of it on a board. Okay, they have a couple. Um, so they have a purple yeah. alphas kit, so you can get kind of a, a monochrome aesthetic if that's more your thing. I think this is really, really nice. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Definitely. And there's also, of course, a 40s kit and a space bar kit, both of which are also priced very reasonably. Yeah, the, the prices on this, I just can't get over them. Um, you know, $35 for the uh, for the 40s kit, and I think was it $35 for the space bar kit as well. But you have to remember the space bar kit includes both the cream and the violet space bars, which is... It's a lot of space bars. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of space, a lot bars. Of space bars. We've seen we've seen other space bar kits that have less than half of that compatibility for around the same sort of price. So, so yeah. Heine yeah. has really worked well with Mike on this one to get the prices as low as possible. I'm really really impressed with the prices. I think for me personally, as an ISO user, I think this is probably close enough to the cheapest perfect base kit for me. I get that there's other people in the community that have different opinions, and that's great. That's fine. Um, uh, but I, I think that's a really, really strong base kit for that price. And yeah, I, I can't tip my hat far enough to, to Heine for, for being able to get it to that price. Yeah, I, I almost wonder, is this just kind of uh, what we <clears throat> expect from Novel Keys now? Now that they're kind of like the, the big uh, US vendor now, and they can often hit those 500 MOQs without blinking an eye, are we just basing all these prices on 500 MOQs now? Uh, maybe. I mean, one of the things that we, we saw previously is we, we did see, uh, and I know that a lot of noise was made earlier on this year about getting $99 base kits, but we did see big base kits that got to $99 earlier on in the, the hobby's history, like with GMK Nautilus. So that had a huge base kit that had, you know, full UK ISO, NumPad, uh, all of this compatibility you see here, and more, uh, more akin to something like the GMK Calm Depths kind of base kit size, which is $125. And because of that ran on mass drop and it hit certain MOQs, that got down to $99. So I think what we're seeing is we're just seeing that the fact is that so many sets are selling these days. Uh, nothing is failing to hit MQ right at the minute that we're getting to a point where we can start to plan and, and people like Mike and, and, and Heine can start to plan that we're probably going to hit 500 even if we have to buy a few extras. So why don't we use that price to set the base instead of going for MOQ price, which is 250 or 150 depending on which colors you're using. So I, I do think that as the hobby gets bigger, prices can drop because we're producing in large quantities and we're producing those quantities more consistently than we ever have before as well. So I think that's a really good point, Brian, and, and, and as well made for this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the community is just ready and willing to buy key sets right now. And it seems like no matter how many key sets that the community throws out people, like throws out at people throughout the month, people still want to buy it. Like we have what? Yeah. Ten, we have eight key sets running this month? Ten key sets? Eleven uh, key sets? Hold on, ridiculous. hold on. I had the, uh, the, hold on, I did have it up because there was a couple that we'd forgotten about when we were talking through them the other day. So uh, one... Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve key sets are running this month. 
and 10 of those are GMK. Yeah, and I bet all 10 of those will make MOQ. Yeah, and I, I, I think what we're, what we're saying now as well is that MOQ isn't really 250 because we're pricing them for 500. I think MOQ is... We might as well start saying that MOQ is 500 in, in some ways, you know, not for it to get made, but in terms of where the, 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 the vendors are marketing the prices at. And I don't think anything's going to fail to get there. You know, it, we, we live in a world, and we've commented on this before, where things like Hand Debate can, can make MOQ at 150, which is crazy because two years ago, that set would have got 10 sales. Six months ago, when it first ran, that set got like 40 sales. And then six months later, and it's hitting MOQ without even batting an 230. eyelid. 230. Henry. Yeah, exactly. It was it was almost at two fifty. You know, if that had been any other set, if that had been this set, for example, uh, you know, no one would have batted an eyelid at the vendors buying an extra twenty sets to get to two hundred and fifty MQ. It would have made it without a shadow of a doubt, which is absolutely crazy considering that that you you know where the hobby was a year ago. Key sets right now are hot stuff, the hot property. They are selling more than what we uh, were expecting to see. So. Yeah. And it's cool because now yeah. we can get those uh, those kit um, price breaks at you know five hundred units, a thousand units, um, you know, without too much effort. It's awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very I mean, awesome. just just to, just to, just to recap the, the sets that we've got this month, we've got GMK Black on White, White, White on Black Icon Mod, GMK eight zero zero eight, GMK Night Runner, which we'll touch on later on, uh, GMK Voyage, which we covered last week, uh, Violet on Cream, uh, EPBT Simple JA, uh, MT three Serica, GMK Missing Keys. Uh, GMK Merlin, which we'll cover later on as well. Uh, GMK Froyo, uh, which I think we'll probably cover next week because it goes live uh, next week as well. And yeah, GMK White on Black, Hiragana, plus uh, SA Berserk as well. So it's just a huge, huge number of, uh, of, of, of sets that can run successfully these days. And, and six months ago, the hobby struggled. We, we struggled to get key sets to MOQ. You look at Olivia, which was the hottest set of 20. 18 and it struggled to get to MOQ at 250. If it ran now, a thousand units wouldn't, no one would bat an eyelid. If Mike re -ran, ran that set right this minute, he probably would price it at a thousand units or he would expect a thousand unit sales because that's just where the hobby's going. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, bringing it back to Violet on Cream. Obviously, as you can see here, guys, $150 base kit. Group buys open now. Uh, I think it runs throughout most of the month. Yep closes on the 31st of this month so you still got quite a while to decide on it but very inexpensive base kit for the compatibility that you're getting absolutely and just to call out if you are in the uh, eu the proxy for this is uh, my keyboard as well so uh, big shout out to my keyboard because they're, they're running all the sets at the minute they've got a, a ton yeah. of sets on, on the go at the minute <laughs> they seem to be the yes. main proxy probably now we talked about this before the show i was like hmm um, I asked Merlin where where, uh, where where that was running. We'll cover that shortly. And he was like, oh, it's running on my keyboard. And I looked on their site, and it's like they've got 12 key sets running. So it was uh, very impressive for my keyboard. So well done to those guys. Yep. All right, moving on over to Drop. We finally see MT3 Serica launching. And boy, has this set been selling pretty darn well, actually, since it launched. And... I, I how do you, have you used MT3 before? How do you actually feel about MT3? So I've got an, an MT3 set. Um, the set I have I don't like, but the sculpt I do like. Uh, so I've got the Elven set, but I like my legends to be legible, and I, I I struggle with it. Even though I can touch type and I don't need to look at the keyboard to type, I still struggle with it because they throw my, my head off. It's like a a mental block. So whilst I don't like the particular keys that I have, I really do like the sculpt. So. For me, it's what SA isn't. Um, when I first joined the hobby, I was very much an SA user. You know, uh, Hyper 7 was kind of like my first foray into custom keycaps and custom boards, and that was an SA set. Um, MT3 is very, very interesting. It does feel like it hooks your fingertips when you're typing, and I kind of like that sensation. Uh, I like the sculpt, I like the height of the keycaps, and they are very reminiscent of the old beam spring keycaps, which I know is what they're based on from Mateo. Um, in terms of the Serac colorway, not my favorite, but I can see why people like it. Um, I think this set personally for me fit better in GMK than it did in, than it does in MT3. Uh, I just think that it's a, a set that looks better with double shot legends rather than uh, than die sublimated ones. Um, so yeah, but that's just a personal thought on this one. Yeah. Uh, regardless, Serica, one of the more popular uh, key sets we have in the community when it comes to GMK, they still sell mm -hmm. in the aftermarket for exorbitant amount of prices. Um, 
And this one is, is kind of interesting. So the MP3 version is going to have two different alpha kits, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, you, when you have sets run on drop, previously mass drop, you kind of reach a very, very wide audience. A lot of people that aren't even in the, what we would consider the community. So uh, yeah. they can they can kind of get that reach to, to do like multiple um, alpha kits and stuff like that and break down of tons of kits, which we see here. But here we yeah. have the normal alphas, uh, which are the Latin alphas, of course. And then we have a Katakana kit, which is pretty interesting. So that's going to use Latin with Katakana sub-legends. I actually think that looks really, really nice. Um, if I do say so myself, I like it a lot. Oh, more really? I'd, I'd go the other way. I'd, really? I'd go for the, just the, the the core alpha kit rather than the uh, the katakana one. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'm um, just uh... taste. Yeah, it's different. Different taste, right? D different strokes for different folks. Yeah, ex yeah, absolutely. But uh, regardless, the, the set's actually selling pretty well. They've already sold 300 Latin alphas and 244 katakana um, alphas and 431 modifiers. So that's like, you know, you've already sold roughly. Roughly 500, what we'd call base kits, alpha plus mods. Yeah, so. I think the easiest way to look at this one is to look at the modifiers set because everyone's going to need modifiers. And then what I suspect you're having is some people are picking one or the other of the alpha kits, and some people are picking both, and that's where you get the the, the crossover between the two numbers. So I think in terms of sets sold as base sets, what we traditionally call a base set, I think 430 ish is kind of a number one. Yeah, but it's, yeah. well, it's pretty well. The, the 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 counter there is that some people aren't going to pick up modifiers, and they're just going to pick up um, things like the the forties, the ergo, and uh, stuff like that. that maybe fit their, like, maybe they're they're more compact sub sixty percent boards. But sure, but yeah, I I, I would say around five hundred ish. The the one thing I will say for this though is that it, it's because Mastrop own the molds for this and it's something they can run and as you touched earlier on they can run all of these different sets they don't have to worry about MOQs particularly they can because they own the manufacturing process for this they can run five or ten of each kit if they want to it doesn't really matter to them um, it, it is one of the ways that they can reach out and have so many different options for so many different people um, you know we, we, we sometimes in in um, uh, GMK sets see UK ISO in the base set. Uh, sometimes we don't see ISO at all in there, but they can have a kit here that doesn't matter if they only get five orders for it, something they can produce. They can also produce an international kit, which is just really, really inclusive, and it is really good to see. And the uh, they also have the typist kit, which is something we don't see at all in GMK anymore. I can't remember the last time we saw a Colmac or Dvorak um, uh, kit run for, for GMK. I think it was probably Yuri. Uh, which is quite a few years ago now, but this has coverage for all sorts of different layouts that I've some of that, that I've never even tried, such as Workman and Norman, uh, and and I've never even heard of Cal Carpalks. I've never heard of that one. <laughs> Carpalx. I've never even heard of that. Um, so you know, it, it is good to see that we can accommodate all of the those different requirements through this set. That's good. Yeah, definitely tons and tons of kits. So regardless of what you're uh, looking at here, they're probably going to have you covered. So, yeah, that yeah. is MT3 Serica. Get on that if that is more your thing. Next up, we have GMK Night Runner over on the Key. Oof. Company. Oof, you've been saying oof yeah. a lot today, Jay. I know, I don't know why. You, I don't know you, why. Are you becoming like the rest of us? <laughs> you, 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 you're rubbing me up the wrong way. Am I, am I, am I, I rubbing, am I rubbing off on you a little bit? I don't, even, I don't even say oof that much. I type a lot, <clears> I don't say it very much. Um, the, the, the reason why I was doing the, 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 the oof for this one, though, is just because of the link I'm going to paste now, which we'll just talk about very briefly again, guys, before we get into the set. Uh, but we are running a giveaway in uh, conjunction with uh, the key company for you to be able to win an, uh, one of these sets through the group buy. So you won't get the set soon. You'll get the set as it ships in the group buy. The link is in there, guys. If you are interested in this set, you do want a chance to win one. Feel free to enter that Gleam link that I've pasted into chat, uh, and uh, we will be joined that just before the next week's show uh, and we'll announce the winner on on this show next week yep absolutely so you want to yeah, tell us that. about the set brian what what do you think to the set what do you think to gmk night runner um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be totally honest when i first saw the set i didn't really care for it that much but i, I think it's growing on me it honestly is growing on me okay and uh, I, I think the compatibility in the base kit is pretty good I can't really see yeah. anything off the top of my head that uh, is actually missing. We actually have, uh, we have. Is this this is what you'd call true ISO support, right? 
Uh, it's, it's kind of basic ISO support, yeah. In fact, it's even it's slightly more than that. It's one key more than that. So for, for ISO support, you need four keys. You need the split left shift, which is two keys. You need a 1.25U shift and then a one new key. You need the ISO enter, uh, and then you need a you need one R3 uh, key as well. So uh, if you think about uh, the, the length of the ANSI enter, it kind of covers uh, uh, 2.25U. Uh, so you need another one new key there as well. Uh, what this actually covers uh, is it covers that and it also covers a UK ISO key next to that as well. Uh, so on UK ISO, we have at, uh, which is just one one key removed from the enter key. Uh, and we don't have it on the two like you guys do in, in, in ANSI. Um, so this is almost, almost UK ISO. It's only, you could argue it's only two keys away from being UK ISO because uh, you just need the two and the three legends uh, on row one to be replaced to meet that as well. Uh, but it also has an uh, accent ISO enter as well, which is great to see. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a really fair amount of ISO coverage on this one. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good step on this one. Yeah, pretty fair nice base kit. ISO aside, definitely uh, definitely a lot of things going on here. Also, shout out to MK Tyson, who just subbed at Tier 1 for eight months. It says, keep up the great keyboard news. Love watching you guys. Thank you so much, Tyson. Appreciate that, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, and 159 says, uh, you can't hear us? Yeah, Wait, I think that's just, just, just him. I think he's got it muted or something. Oh. Everyone else can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, SC Major, I, I know the grave key is different as well. I didn't want to touch on that. That's why I said it's almost UK. So I said if you, the, the two and three key would be kind of close there. There is a couple of keys as well. That's probably the least used key in, in UK ISO. So uh, so you, thank you for the correction. I, I'm aware of that. Um, and you're right. I didn't call it out, but I should have done. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to the Night Runner. Uh, I, I do like the theme a lot, the whole kind of dystopian cyberpunk uh, kind of aesthetic going on here. It does get a little busy. Uh, like the the novelties are pretty intense, um, if I do say so myself. They're a little bit more busy than something I'd like to use. Aside from that, the the run enter would use that ten yeah. out of ten times. But uh, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them fine. pretty busy. But look at how many novelties are in this. I feel like this is something yeah. we're seeing more and more of lately, too, because on a lot of GMK sets in the past, if you have novelties, it's like one or two keys thrown right in the base kit. And lately, over the last year, we've had specific novelty kits like for every single set that comes out. Pretty yeah. intense. It, it, it is. I, I would like to say that I do kind of like a lot of these novelties as well. The the, the ones where it's got the buildings and it's kind of like the skyline and stuff like that, I really like. I'm not so personally i'm not such a fan of the the the, the training shoe and the uh uh the cassette player and the, and the and the crane but the building ones i really 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 do enjoy i think they're really nice um yeah. and it, it just in terms of the yellow it, it's kind of reminiscent of the of the set three run i don't know if you've ever had mm -hmm. that set or if you've seen it uh, oh, yeah. it kind of does remind me of that um as, as well but i think it works better with this dark blue and the black alphas uh, than it did in, in GMK3 run as well. So it's nice to see that color come back. It's not something that's used particularly often, uh, but it's something we know that GMK can do well. Um, so I know it might be slightly different, but it's very similar. Yeah. Definitely uh, definitely enjoying this uh, set more and more, like the more I look at it. I feel yeah, like it's, it's, I, it's pretty decent. I, I think I agree. I think what I would like to see and, and the basic has got, got compatibility for it as well is the uh, the TKC 1800 boards that they do are really really nice boards um, I, I was tempted to pick one up the last time they ran and I didn't uh, I think I've heard that they're going to run again soon .tm. I think uh, uh, I think Mike's uh, so I think the key.com company is in chat yeah so I, I don't know if they are going to run again but if they are let us know because I would love to pick one up maybe in black with this key so I think that would look really really nice he says it's next Friday Oh wow! This there you Friday, go. easy this Friday. Wow! I th I thought I'd seen it. I thought I'd seen it. I thought I'd seen some on my show. I didn't know if I was uh, speaking out of turn or not. Um, so yeah, so I'd l I'd love to see one in black with this this set on. Yeah, I think that'd look great. Yeah, this set obviously pretty bright. <clears throat> it's very very intense as far as the colors go. So I think this would look really nice on a more neutral board, something like uh, black or maybe maybe a dark gray. Yeah. Wuvi subs yeah. with Twitch Prime. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. I think it does look really good on that 
black grid 600 as well. It looks really good on that black board that's there. True. I, think that's I didn't good. I didn't know until just the other day how popular the grid 600 was and how people are actually selling oh, them for like double on the aftermarket. I had yeah, no idea huge. that board was so popular. I, th I, think, I think Random Frank P's build video helps that a little bit, uh, to be quite oh, honest. But yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so he 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 built a, a grid 600 uh and he built it with inks actually um uh, and he put a video up on his youtube a couple of days ago uh, and i think that's had something like uh, a million views already so i'm not surprised it's uh, it's one of the more popular boards at the minute very nice very nice um yeah we man i should i should try to get him on the show actually i think he's a little bit more into the keyboard community now since i think he has some kind of connection with nathan I think Nathan built a board for him or, you know, something of that nature. So I know they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're kind of networked now, and I wonder if I can get in on that and have him on the show. That'd be a fun interview, honestly. Yeah, he's featured a couple of people from the Hobbies desks on uh, on there as well when he does his uh, battle stations. I know mine's been featured on there. I think uh, Mr. Petros has been featured at some point on there as well. Um, so it's, 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 it's good to see that he's, he's paying attention as well, because I think Mr. Petros only put his picture on the Mechanical Keyboards Reddit and it got uh, picked up into there from there. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yep. All right. Uh, <clears throat> not Zesty Salsa. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, man. Appreciate that. Four month streak as well. Wow. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Dude. Heck yeah. Also, anyway, yeah, so back to the Night Runner. $139 yeah, yeah. base kit, space bar kit, $22. Pretty cheap. Ortho kit, $55. Actually, quite a few keys in there. And that actually comes with a lot of space bars, too, which is kind of nice. And then a, yeah. uh, a fifty-five dollar novelty novelties. Wow, almost got that messed up. Uh, a novelties kit there. There are quite a few novelties though, so that price pretty reasonable. I it's would say it's kind of justified. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's fat. And, yeah. uh, I, I mean, if you sorry, sorry go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you hang up. No, no, no you, you sir, hang up. You go first. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go first. Right. Okay. I was gonna say, uh, just looking at the uh, the units sold as well. So the base gets hit 51 of 250 units already. So it's well on the way to hitting MOQ. I think this will do just fine on that respect. Uh, the only one that's uh, that, that's low at the minute is the Ortho kit at eight units. But after a couple of days, and there's still there's only 100 kits needed, I think that pretty much everything's probably going to get made on this. It looks looks like it's going to do pretty well for itself. So yeah. Yeah, there are, of course, just like a lot of other sets uh, on the market these days, there are going to be things that you can get along with it, such as desk mats. There are going to be two available here. So you have that uh, that very, very intense, busy kind of dystopian, I don't know, Tokyo skyline sort of thing with the moon and the guy sitting on the building. Very, very intense, but it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool picture, and there's kind of more of a pattern one. We've been seeing this theme a little bit more lately. There's usually like a more intense death map, and there's a little more simpler one with a pattern. Yeah, yeah. And then it yeah. uh, looks I, like I, they I, have a collaboration with Zap Cables going on here as well, which is kind of neat. That's cool, yeah. Just as well, the death mats have already well hit the MOQ. So the MOQ is 20 for these, um, and uh, there's been 30 already ordered. So that's doing really well. 50 base kits and 30 death mats ordered. It says people like their uh, peripheral uh, on the side of their keycap sets, so yeah. good to see. Um, I, I do think I prefer the, uh, the, the 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 secondary map for this one. Um, the first one's probably just a little bit too busy for me. If it stripped off that big uh, um, uh, Japanese sign off the big building in the center and got rid of the, the the guy on the rooftop in the front, I think I'd like just that whole cityscape a little bit more. That's really just my personal taste. Yeah. Well, it's uh, also something we were talking about this. I think on the last episode too, where if you actually mm. look at a desk mat, where do you put your keyboard? What is your keyboard yeah. going to cover up in this? What is your mouse going to cover up in this? Well, it's going to go, it, yeah, on this one, the keyboard's going to cover right up over that moon, and your mouse is going to be somewhere around uh, the, the the side of that uh, that big uh, big sign on the side of the building. Right? Yeah. That's, that's where I would put it anyway. I feel like it, I, I don't I don't mean to play the bad guy, but obviously I, I do play the bad guy a lot. But I, I don't I don't think a lot of people think <laughs> out desk mat designs as like far enough to where think about where keyboards are going to be go like what size keyboards are going to be there like what are the most popular where your mouse is going to be like you should have designs that you could actually see visibly while you're still using your keyboard and mouse on it because you're going to have your keyboard and mouse on it anyways i mean how many people buy desk mats just to, like frame on their walls like probably yeah, probably absolutely. very yeah. very few people considering the amount of people that actually use the desk pads so I would like to see a little just, bit more thought go in. And I'm not just picking on this. I just mean sets in general. I think that people could design deathmats with a little bit more thought involved about where keyboards are going to be placed on them. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, I like to change my desk map pretty much weekly lately. There's that many good desk maps come out that it's kind of nice to just have loads of different ones and so you can change them and kind of theme your, your desk for the week depending on what keyboard you've got on there and what keycap set and what desk map you've got. It's just nice to be able to do that. So uh, I, I do like the fact that we're seeing more of these, even if there's some of the designs aren't for me personally because not everything's going to be, not everyone likes everything. It'd be boring if we all like the same things. Um, but, you know, it is good to see that we're getting loads of these designs. And I do think that when creative mind and whoever else was behind the uh uh the the, the designs for stuff like this um you know done a, a really good uh, really good job of that so yeah yep definitely so uh yep GMK mike, mike Runner, the, up right now mike the, uh, yeah mike says the key dot company uh he says uh, so, uh how many people in here own five plus desk mats that they don't use uh me <laughs> probably I, not many i have used every desk mat that i bought every single one of them and I, I rotate every week or so. So I, I don't know. I, I never have any just to, like, have. I always buy them to use. So do you yeah, want I to... Uh, I've just been calling, calling Mike... Uh, Jason Mike. Jason. Jason. I don't know why I've said that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know I why told, I've been saying that. How many times do I have to tell you that, Jay? Come on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Groff. I don't know. I, I think it's because I'm remembering his old username, which was it's Mike almost, Poncho. It's almost like it's like I 2 a.m. in the morning cool. for you or something. 3.28 a.m. right now. <laughs> 3.28, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah. do you want to share that link Sorry, one Jason, more time no, for the, the giveaway? A couple people have already asked. I will do. Me. Yeah, let me let me grab that again uh, and uh, copy link. Don't forget, guys, we'll have the giveaway link all... Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm just reading Mike's We'll have the giveaway link posted all over the place. So it'll be in our Discord. It will be on the video uh, when it goes onto YouTube. We'll put it everywhere that we can do. So you yeah. guys got plenty of time to enter it as well. Um, and uh, just, just while I was laughing just a second ago, I said um, I, I changed my Discord handle because of Jay calling me Mike. Uh, it's because it's ingrained in my head, Jason. I do know that your name is Jason. I just, I just, I instantly well, see the key. Yeah. Company. My con show as that name, and that's just, just, just end up talking. When you have a normal Sorry. name I and apologize. your username. That isn't your name. It's really easy to get confused. It is, yeah, yeah. So apologies. I do apologize. Um, uh, we're just, we're, you know, we're. It, it, it's, it's all good. Uh, everyone called me Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. It's because Mike from Novel Keys is called Mike as well. So everyone's called Mike in my head. If, if we're yeah. Um, I'm going to start calling Dixie Mike now just to wind up as well. Yeah. It's also <laughs> worth shouting out here that you can uh, you can see on the top here. There is free shipping to USA and Canada on Night Runner if your order is two hundred dollars oh, nice. or more. Uh, or I guess just over two hundred dollars. So uh, if you have like maybe you get a base kit and a couple other kits or whatever, you can get free shipping on that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So. Uh, did we mention other vendors and proxies? I can't remember if we did. For uh, this one. We can right now. So in Europe, you're going to be able to get this through Candy Keys, and in Asia, you can get it from Z Frontier. So there we go. Yeah. There yeah. One go. of the few that's running yeah. on Candy Keys. And <laughs> yeah, shout out once again to the key company for uh, letting us give away a group buy spot for GMK Night Runner. Very, very awesome. Yeah. Every time we can give away GMK, that's that's a really big deal. So shout out to them. We appreciate that so much, guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move over to uh, a set that I, I don't think you're too fond of. This is an interest check for GMK <laughs> Camping in Japan. So this is okay, kind of... Let, let me be clear. Let me be clear. I, I like GMK Camping. I, I do. I just don't like the Japanese sub -legend. You need to watch more anime, Jay. <laughs> all right guys we're gonna get him on the anime train no worries anyways so this is kind of okay i'm gonna start out by saying this is lacking a lot of renders which is kind of uh kind of strange i feel like i feel like king nesty he's he's a veteran in this community and he's got connections for everything in the community like if he yeah. wants renders all he has to do is ask literally anyone in the community and he's gonna get some renders so i'm a little surprised that we don't actually have some good renders here um, we do have what seems to be kind of a base kit um, with no accents or novelties going on here. I, I'm not 100% sure. Do you know if these are the exact same colors that Camping uses? So from what I understand, it's the same colors from Camping, uh, and you can use the novelties from round one in round two. I, I, I don't want to call this round two, actually, because I feel like it's, it's almost not a different set. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's not. So, so people who bought GMK Camping will be able to use it on Camping in Japan. You'll be able to mix and match the, the keycaps if you wanted to. So if you wanted to use the alphas from this with the uh, uh, with the Hiragana sub-legends and you wanted to use that on the original set, you can quite easily do that. Uh, I do feel what's missing from this one is all of those accent keys that are in that lovely burgundy color, that accent color, which to, to me is what made Camping such a great set, was that, that burgundy, earthy, 
colour. That was that was the the best part of the set. To be honest, that just that sprinkled throughout the, the keycaps made it all, you know one of the nicer sets. Uh, and I'm still really really sad that I don't own uh, GMK camp. It's one of the few GMK sets I don't own and ne never have done. Um, so uh, so I, I am a little bit sad about that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the keycaps, if you look at the base kit, it does offer some good compatibility though. Uh, so you can do Sangam bottom row. You can do 65%. You can do HHKB. Uh, you can even do ISO uh, as well. So so lots of compatibility in there. It's good to see that uh, numpad as as well uh, as standard. Um, so I think the the base kit's fine. I I would like to see some of those accent keys in there. Maybe just on the escape and the arrows and maybe the enters as well. That'd be quite nice to see. Uh, I don't think it needs tons. I think it just needs a little little sprinkling maybe. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard. I feel like he he only has the base kit and what seems to be kind of a space bars kit here um, going on. Yeah. I feel like it might not be pictured, but there might be some kind of novelties kit that is planned already for this, and he's just not showing it yet because we're missing yeah. we're missing like a lot of renders, anyways. So I, there might just be quite a few things going on here. So on his to do list, he does say he needs to finalize the novelty kit um, as well as the base kit, and he's going to have Rama caps and more renders. So, I don't know. I think there's potential here, but it seems like a lot of people really not having these uh, Hiragana sub-legends for the, the, their camping, basically. Not a whole lot of fans of this, it seems. I just don't know if it fits the theme of the set. So this whole camping thing, I, you, you know... I'm not sure. Jim K. Camping made sense. You know, it had the fire novelties and all of that kind of stuff. It had the earthy tones, the green tones. It kind of fit. It worked. It was a nice set. But then to just say camping in Japan, just as an excuse to add the Hiragana of Legends feels kind of unusual. I think what I would have rather seen is I'd have rather seen a, a, a camping R1 rerun so do a camping r2 with the same base kit or very similar to the original one and then do another alpha pack like we've uh, like we've seen with uh violet and cream earlier on today where you've got a second alpha pack and you can put the uh, the the violet alphas with the uh uh the original mods from the base kit i think something that might have worked better for me personally i don't know if the rest of the community agrees on that one but that's how i'd like to have seen this i think yeah i don't know i i think gmk camping is a really strong set this doesn't bother me too much. I don't think... I've never been bothered too much by the Hiragana sub-legends. Um, I think that it still fits the theme totally fine. I don't think just the fact that it's in Japan necessarily takes away from it being GMK camping. Um, the naming maybe could have been a little bit better. Um, maybe offer, maybe make it a full round two and you know, just offer the normal Latin legends so you can, uh, you can choose and maybe offer the sub-legends as a kit or something. I don't know. GMK Camping was a very popular set. I have no doubt that a round two would also do pretty well. I think it would do really well. Yeah. 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 So, I don't, I don't know. It, it, this doesn't bother me too much, but it seems like it's getting a ton of backlash from the community, so... I, I, ju I just do feel like run camping again and have another alpha kit. I think that is what the community would probably want at this yeah. point in time. Yeah. Um, one thing I do like, though, he's kind of got this Mount Fuji... I, I, I'm assuming that's what it's supposed to be, novelty on the escape key in this picture. Um, yeah. I I just recently watched uh, um, Yuru Camp, which is an anime that's literally just about camping. It's a slice-of-life anime that's just about camping, um, them being in Japan also. So it's like, to me, this actually kind of is really well-timed. Um, I, I actually like it. But I can, okay. I can I can see why a lot of people wouldn't. Yeah, I I, th I think if 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 you did uh, GMK camping round two and then you had camping in Japan secondary alphas kit, I think that would work just fine. I just I just yeah. feel like more of the community want the original set than would want this particular version of it. I think. Yeah, that's fair. But anyways, we'll uh, we'll see where this one goes. Maybe he makes some changes. This is still an early interest check, so we'll, yeah, the, we'll have to wait it, you know see. he's. As you said before, he's a veteran of the community. He knows what to do. He knows how to read the community's response to stuff. Uh, he knows how to, uh, to 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 build a good base kit. He knows how to run a GMK set. So, you know, I, I think we'll see uh, some more positive changes on this one. Yeah. Afterwards. He also speaks three languages, fun fact. Oh, really? We, we've, uh, had, we've had him on the show before, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure he speaks uh, Chinese, Belgian, and uh, English. Is his English. Third. Yeah. English is his third language, and he was good enough at it to come on the show. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was, I know. I've, it was impressive. I've got a lot of uh, a lot. Of, so, you know what? One of the one of the worst things about the UK is that we just expect everyone else to speak English, and <laughs> nearly everyone in the EU. And I was talking to someone about this in Discord earlier on. 
nearly everyone in the EU, EU speaks at least two languages. They speak their home language, so it might be German, French, whatever, uh, and they all speak English as well. I've never gone anywhere where you couldn't just have a, maybe not like an in-depth conversation like we are doing here, but where you can't have some sort of conversation like, you know, order your meal or something like that. You know, uh, everyone seems to have that, at least some conversational level of, uh, of English, which is really impressive. And a lot of people can do multiple languages as well. You go to Germany, most people can speak French and English as well as German. You go to France, most people can speak German and English as well as French. It's crazy. And I, it makes me feel like a Luddite for not being able to speak more of any other language. I can speak a little bit of French, but... Uh, other than that, yeah. Everyone like, giving me crap because I accidentally I... said Belgian as a language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking what he was because he he is Chinese and Belgian. And I was actually just answering that question in, <clears throat> in chat. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. I was tempted to call you out on that, but I saw the chat yeah. doing it for me. So this is a live show. <laughs> sometimes we say things that aren't true, and sometimes we say things we don't mean to say. But uh, that's just Speak how it yourself. goes, and now we have to. Uh, yeah, Jay, you never make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, sorry, uh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, what has it been? Like four minutes since you made your last one? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is just the way it is. So sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean to uh, ruin everyone's day by saying that. So yeah, yeah. we'll have yeah. to we'll have to check this out. Once it hits group by phase, assuming it does without making major changes. Yeah. Moving okay. on, we have an interest check. Yeah. Another GMK interest check. Uh, there's a lot Ooh. of those going on. Um, this one is for GMK ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, -I, and uh, this one's done by Oblotsky, and this is kind of uh, inspired by the Micro Switches Hall Effect keyboard that he uh, he checked out when he was visiting Input Club uh, last year when he was in America. So mm. this is kind of the, uh, the inspiration board here, and here is the proposed base kit. Very, very monochrome. I absolutely love this. I think this is a great uh, design. So the only the only other time that we've seen the ASCII legends is in the current seven bit round eight or whatever it is grouped by on DCAC. They actually have some SA sets with these legends in, uh, but they only cover up to the QWERT. They don't cover the YUIOP side. So it's just the kind of the, the left hand cluster they cover. Um, but I think these legends are great, and I'm all for different and new sub legends. I think these look fantastic. And uh, I like the fact that it's on a monochrome set. Uh, I think we, we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where we said that it's a surprise that we haven't seen as many monochrome sets recently as what we used to see. Um, and I think using a white on gray is a really, really strong way of, uh, of promoting this set. Uh, as well, I think it does it real justice. Yeah. It has a whole retro look. It fits the vibe. It fits the kind of pictures of the boards that uh, Ablotsky shared right at the very top. Um, in terms of the base kit as well, it covers quite a lot of stuff. Uh, you've got numpad, you've got uh, basic ISO support in there. Um, given the fact uh, how much I love this, I would love to see for you carry so, but I know that's probably not going to happen. Uh, you've got Sangan support. You've got uh, multiple different keys on on here for different things as well. Um, one of my favourites is that you have shift lock instead of caps lock for the uh, the caps lock key, and you also have a stepped shift lock key as well. I really really like that legend. Um, the, the set's almost worth buying for me just for that one cap, I think, to be honest. A shift lock key is really nice. Uh, you can also cover uh, uh, HHKB and multiple other boards as well, 1800. There's the support for an absolute ton of stuff in this base kit, so really good to see. Yeah, also a 1.75U function key, which I thought was kind of interesting. We don't see that too often. <clears throat> Some people do opt to use yeah. function in that spot as opposed to caps lock or control. I know quite a few people that do that, actually. So Yeah. Pretty interesting. Don't usually see that, but uh, colors they look fine. I mean, this isn't this isn't a set that's supposed to be like a new, like inventive, like colorway. You know, it's not that's not what he's aiming for here. This is literally inspired by this old Hall Effect keyboard. And if you yeah. look at the inspiration picture here, you can see like he's really trying to kind of mimic that. He's trying to replicate that. He's not trying to do something entirely new, guys. I know, I know, it's a monochrome set. It's only two colors. They're stock colors. It's boring, but it's boring for a reason because it's supposed to be, uh, you know, a vintage rehash basically, and the yeah, legend, the, if... the sub legends are kind of the the real appeal here. Absolutely, I was just going to say that. I think if you made this a flashy set, it would detract from the the legends, the sub legends on the keycaps, which give it the the interesting quality. That's that's what's going to make you look at this keyboard and, and we look at it. A lot of people are shouting out the F key as well because it's got a great legend. So the the F key sub legend is A C K or FAC as it reads out, which is really good. <laughs> that's pretty um, great. 
Also, it is worth <laughs> noting. Yeah. Check out they have the uh, the row zero support here and row five support. So you actually have yes. no row four bottom row. You are forced into row five, which I'm okay with. I don't mean to make that sound a negative way, but you know, row five. No, I'm, I've been a fan of it. I know you like it a lot. I love it. Yeah, it's my favorite row. Yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon to see that. Um, and row zero as well. So for those that you haven't seen row zero, traditionally we see row one on the escape row. Um, so they're the same height keycaps as what you get on your number row. Row zero is significantly taller. And if you guys have never seen a row zero cap, uh, next to it, it absolutely dwarfs a row one cap. It's uh, monstrous. It's um, but it really does work with the sculpt. And I'm, I'm surprised we don't see row zero and row five more often. So I'm really, really excited to see a set that forces both because that's uh, that's that's my kind of thing um, but again i love all this vintage look and feel so even if i don't tend to buy the vintage boards i like the look and the aesthetic of the vintage stuff uh, i just prefer the modern uh modern hardware underneath yeah so i mean boring colorway aside that's totally my thing this is uh probably gonna be an insta buy for me um especially now that i see the the fat key <laughs> it's just too good man. yeah it's good isn't it yeah <laughs> Just too good. So this is slated for November 2019, where it'll run on Kono, MyKeyboard.eu, and Z Frontier, respectively, for your proxies. So yeah, we'll have to uh, have to check that out again once it hits November. Oh, and uh, uh, C3 Roman is uh, just reminded as well. PBTSA control code keycaps. One of the generic PBTSA keycaps that uh, recently had uh, the ASCII and control code legends on as well. I completely forgot about that. You're absolutely right. Yes, they did. Um, I do remember that set. Now you've mentioned it, and I thank you very much for the, the heads up. Thank you. Nice, <clears throat> nice. All right, let's move over to something that uh, maybe is a little bit flashier, depending on who you are. So this is an interest check called GMK Blink, which is. Uh, Kind of a hybrid word for black and pink. This is done by you, Jebra, you. and this is uh, inspired by uh, Black Pink, which is a let me let me make sure I'm getting this right. It's a popular K-pop group, I believe. Yeah, Apparently he's, so. Yeah. He's got a little gift down here of uh, what I'm assuming is Black Pink, and I'm not yeah. uh, I'm not too into the K-pop world. I don't know too much about that, but I know a lot of people in the community seem to be. So. Uh, I guess this is this set's kind of been a long time coming, and I didn't even realize it. Yeah, I did have a nice segue for this, but the, the oh. kind of stole it from the front. I was going to say, "Don't blink, or you'll miss it," and I was going to play a whole little segue, but never mind, never mind. We're, we're into the segue. <laughs> well, it would have been fun. terrible anyway. It would have made everyone cringe. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I actually, interesting enough, so this week, just a few days ago, I actually met up with, uh, with Zonda. Uh, we went for a, for a drink in Manchester in the UK together. Uh, and this is one of the things that we, we talked about, amongst other things which I probably shouldn't share, so I won't. Um, but we did talk about this because he's quite a big fan of, uh, of K-pop uh, bands as well. So um, what, what do you think to this set, Brian? What, what are your thoughts on, on the colorway? Colorway is totally fine. I actually like it. Um, a few things I noticed on the uh, the renders, though, which were kind of interesting, is the C key is backwards. And I don't know if that's supposed to be that way. Like, I feel like maybe that's some kind of black pink theme. Um, maybe that's how uh, they, they use it. It's not that way name. in the base kit. In, in, the, uh, in the base kit drawing, it's not that way. So, yeah, uh, so that, that's why I wasn't entirely sure. But all the, all the other renders seem to have the backwards C. So I feel like there's some kind of joke there that I don't, I don't really get because I'm not into K-pop, maybe. So... Not really sure there, but if you check out the uh, renders, both in the base kit and as well as uh, the renders on the board, you can check out a few of the legends, maybe look a little bit different than how you're used to for GMK key sets. So check out the uh, the yeah. legends for tab, backspace, and the row three caps and control. So check out this. We have, we have an icon plus text control, stepped and unstepped, which I thought was kind of interesting. Then uh, the backspace, we have the box icon with the text box. Uh, backspace. So this is pretty uncommon for GMK. Stuff. Yeah, it, it is. I think we have seen these legends before in other sets. I, th if I remember rightly, that uh, that caps key was in um, one of the uh, one of the pink sets that that ran in China. Uh, I can't remember which which version of it it was. One of the KA sets. I'm pretty sure we saw that there. Um, and we have seen that backspace key before as well, but I can't remember which set. But you're right, they are unusual. Some of the lesser used... Uh, the control models. and the short backspace in particular, I, I've never even yeah. seen before. 
yeah, I think the short back space is one that I've not seen before. Um, I've definitely seen the full back space with the, uh, the 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 icon in there. The the controls I've never seen that one either as well. So yeah, I think you I think you're right that there is some uh, some different ones. Um, interestingly enough, as well, when you called out that the C was backwards, there's also the N is backwards in the renders as well. Uh, it's not on the base kit drawing, but oh my the, god, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone in chat pointed that out. So thanks very much. Sir. For that guys as well uh, and the a key as well I, just, I noticed this as well it doesn't have the uh, the hash across the middle it's just a uh, an upside down v for for all its effects in, in the renders as well so but that again isn't reflected in the base okay i'm gonna, uh, set I'm, I'm gonna just because i was curious i'm looking it up right now that is all because that is actually their uh, their logo Right. Okay. That makes sense. So, that yeah. makes sense. If they've got the the A without the uh, the hash across the middle, they've and got the C N and, and C the wrong way yep. around. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I'm checking the other letters in black pink. It all looks <laughs> normal. Yeah. So kind of interesting. I I imagine that's not going to be on the set. That's probably strictly for rendering purposes, um, unless they had an additional kit to include all of that. I imagine the majority of people would probably be a, they'd probably want the normal legends. But uh, it would be yeah. kind of fun to see like a, an extra black pink kit where you can get those uh, those backwards legends or whatever. Yeah, well, to be honest, GMK will make the molds for them if enough people buy it and stuff like that. So, and and I think that whilst it's got the uh, the, I think these are the Korean sub legends uh, across the majority of the keys, uh, the ones are, that are seen in the renders across the uh, the Q, W, E, R, and T keys, I don't think those are the standard ones because I don't think it has the three legends on the standard uh, Korean. Ones, does it? I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm uh, not sure if those. I'm not sure those either. Those are standard. Let me let me just look up Korean beige really quickly because I think it is the Korean uh, legends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Heidi says, "O is upside down." Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. So, well, so I'm, welcome sorry, to the so show, Korean, Heidi. But <laughs> thanks, Heidi. Korean beige does have the uh, have the those. Uh, Third legends, the tertiary legends on the Q, W, E, R, and C caps as well. So I, yeah. I was wrong on that, but I, I didn't recall seeing that. But... Yeah, I, I think the set looks fine. I think it, it definitely I has it potential. Great. And with the the enormous influx of people in the community being really into K-pop, it seems like lately. So I, I think yeah. there's definitely a high potential for the set. Looks pretty good. Yeah, colors like this don't usually, uh, they're not usually my kind of uh, thing, but I really like this set. I think it really works. I, I don't really understand the source material. K pop isn't my thing either. Um, but I really, really do like the, uh, the, the, the kit itself. I think it looks great. Um, I, I do, and I like the fact that the base kit's got so much compatibility in it as well. I mean, you can do pretty much everything with 6U spacebar included, numpad, um, all of the 1800 keys that you need. Uh, I'm not sure I like those uh, control. Uh, caps for the capsule key uh, with the legends and the and the icons on there as well, but that's a personal thing. Uh, full UK ISO as well, which is you know my kind of bag as well, so I like that. Um, I think yeah, it's a really strong base kit. Yeah, um, I'm really interested I, I, to see. So it's probably buy it. I'm really interested to see this uh, text icon control and the text icon backspace, uh, particularly the short backspace in person. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, not I've not seen those on any set ever, so I, I believe I'm, I'm sure I've seen the full like. one before. I'm going to double check all my sets later on and see if I can find because I'm almost positive that I've seen. The I'm full pretty sure the space one before. I'm pretty sure DCS does that on the full backspace. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, is that yeah? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's 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 interesting. I only saying uh, that he's going to grill on him later. Don't worry. So he's going to say the things that we might not say on on the show. <laughs> I, I I am always honest on the show. I really am. Like I don't I don't I, beat I, around the bush I, on stuff. I just no, I, 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 I don't I, I don't I think, think everything is shit. But I'm also not a designer, so... Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll say when we don't like stuff and when we, we think stuff should be rewritten. I suspect Heine's got a very different way of articulating that to how we articulate it. I suspect that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. the, the way we uh, we articulate might be very different between this stream and Heine's stream later on today. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see the comparison. Maybe a little bit, yeah. We love you, Heine. We love yeah. you, Heine. I can't I, wait for I, the stream. I, I will probably be watching that stream, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably just going to stay up just to watch it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's uh, let's let's move on. We talk about Blackpink enough. If you're into Blackpink, yep. bam, there you go. You uh, you might have a set coming just for you. Next up, uh, maybe if you're a fan of Ice, or, I don't I don't know. I don't have segues, dude. Uh, GMK Polar interest <laughs> check going on right now, and uh, this, this might leave you a little bit frosty. Yeah, might leave, might leave your nips just a little bit hard. Um, Oof, this is this, this is this is a 
this is a very polarizing interest check. Hey, there you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I dropped my bike, but it's on a boom arm. But uh, anyways, check out the base kit here. <laughs> Pretty decent compatibility um, yep. from what I can see. But how do you feel about the contrast on this? That is what is worrying me the most right now. So th this actually worries me a little bit. So I think that the, the darker blue modifiers will be just fine. I suspect where the real challenge will be will be in the alphas. So uh, I don't know if anyone's seen uh, GMK. So where that's kind of easy to read, and that's probably the similar, the, the closest alphas I can think of to this. Uh, but the SA version of that, which was called SA Chronicler, um, the the legends were really difficult to read. And it was kind of this very pale blue on a on a on quite a light colored cap almost a white cap um and the legends are really really difficult to read and that's probably the closest we've seen in abs plastic to this particular set that i can think of um i do think there will be a challenge to read them in certain lights i'm also worried about the light blue modifiers i'm not sure if the white text will be strong enough to show through uh we have seen some contrast issues on sets recently uh this does kind of worry me a little bit for this particular set um in terms of the rest of the set i think it looks okay uh, i think it looks like uh and I, I'm going to be blunt here. For me, it feels like a weaker version of something like GMK Shoko. Um, I, I think I much prefer that set to this. And the, so to me, they're very similar. I know the different themes and things like that, but they're, they're probably very similar in terms of the ultimate colors as they'll turn out. Um, but uh, I do think the kit's uh, well designed. It's got a lot of compatibility in there, which is nice to see. Uh, and there, there, there's multiple kits as well. The base kit looks really good. Um, standard space bar kits. The Ortho 40s kit looks quite compatible competitive as well it's even got the extra alice b key as well there given the uh the, the sheer volume of uh, of alice type boards and things that are out there it's uh it's starting to become more and more uh needed uh just jumping over to the novelties what do you think the novelties brian are you do you like these, are you, are you into these? um i think they're fine i'm not the biggest fan of the icon novelties but the melt freeze and chill keys totally the chill keys cool. totally yeah. sold on that i need i need that i you know, long time viewers of Top Clack know that I have a really, really big soft spot for text novelties. That just gets me like every time. I would use all three of those and not even think twice about it. Yeah, I like the step to chill key. That's really nice. Uh, the, the rest of the novelties aren't for me. There's a lot of detail in some of these novelties as well. And I know we've seen that novelties have, have had to be tweaked through GMK before, uh, where lines have been too fine or points have been too pointy uh, and there's been too much detail. I suspect the uh, the uh, some of the lines on the igloo and uh, potentially the narwhal as well might be a little bit too detailed to, to, to achieve. Um, in terms of how the keycap sets looks in the renders, I think it looks okay. I do think that you're right, Brian. I think there is going to be some legend challenges in real life on real plastics where you get real life uh, light shine back from the keycaps and things like that. I think the, the the contrast is going to be difficult to see on some of those keys. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's the biggest worry I have. Um, in, in fact, uh, uh, on the KBD fans Tofu, the, uh, the third render down shows the light coming from a slightly different angle. Uh, uh, from the rear of the keyboard, it's looking at the rear of the keyboard. If you look at that one and the following one, I think those are really good examples of uh, of, of how it might be difficult to see the legends. Um, that top down shot of that uh, of that tofu, if if I'm not if I just glance, it almost looks blank in some ways. Um, yeah. So it's, I, it's, I, it's kind of a I I understand the theme, but it's kind of an interesting color combination because you're using WS2 which is the yeah. whitest white that GMK <clears throat> offers, and you're pairing that with an incredibly, incredibly light blue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you have, you know, bright combined with bright, sometimes, you know, they, they just kind of overlap each other, and you can't really, there's, there's just no contrast. So, yeah, I, I, I actually do like the set. I'm just really worried about it right now. Yeah, I think I think we just need to see, you know, and a, a lot of people do like low contrast sets, uh, you know, so that that's fine. Some people do like that kind of thing. That's why, you know, sets like Soware and Chronicler did sell in fairly large numbers, even when the community was early on. Uh, for me, it, 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 I'd prefer something a little bit more crisp, a little bit easier to read. Um, but I don't think the set looks terrible i think it fits the theme i think the colors aren't too far away uh, to fit the theme especially if you look at the top of that satisfaction 75 i can kind of see the the whole theme as it was uh, uh, described at the top uh, and I, I, the other thing i want to call out as well is that the interest check's quite in-depth as well so there's a lot of information from jermaine uh, around uh, why you wanted to do it, keeping it clean and bright and staying away from dark and muted modifiers um 
uh, you know, lots of different renders on some popular boards with everything from U-Passes boards to West Foxtrot boards. There's details on what he wants to do in terms of desk mat designs and finalizing kits and novelties and uh, getting in touch with makers for, for collaborations and things. So, uh, um, yeah, a lot of, lot of interesting things in there. I think the, the, the actual industry itself is quite strong. Yeah, I am going to call out the use of Pantones here just because I, I, I feel like I just remembered and now we need to talk about it a little bit. So Jay and I actually sat down with uh, someone from GMK pretty recently during the um, around the Seattle meetup time, and they are a little upset about the uh, the usage of Pantones. Basically, um, everyone seems to want to use Pantones to color match, but Pantones not actually meant for plastics, not at all. Yeah. So um, they actually would much prefer if you used raw colors, R A L using that uh, color um, uh, tool just because those are actually meant for plastics. Pantones, yeah. again, not meant for plastics. RAL, meant for plastics. Stop using Pantones when you design sets. Don't I color think match part the Pantones. Of the Part of the challenge with this is though, and and uh, and when we did sit down with uh, with the GMK rep, he did uh, he did admit this is that if you go on Uniki's site, which is uh, the kind of the GMK custom keycap side of the business, um, it does actually tell you to use Pantones on there. So they are updating the site to say don't use yeah. Pantones, use RAL colors because they've realised that whilst they can try and match anything, it's significantly and vastly easier for them to match RAL colors than it is to match Pantones. Um, I think we've seen that, you know, a few sets that have failed because they've used Pantones yeah. uh, to come out exactly what people expected. Um, Solarized Dark, uh, Necro, I'm looking at those two in particular. Um, so, you know, I think we should definitely try and move that way. And I know a lot of uh, designers, such as uh, I spoke to Enjoy from Waves a while back, uh, and he was trying to find the RAL equivalents of the Pantone colors he'd selected uh, so that it was easier for GMK to match them. Yeah, I think moving forward, we'll probably just see more designers just default to RAL, which is what should happen for, so. for GMK yeah. and uh, for keycap usage um, <clears> just, <throat> just right out, of the, right out of the gate. Just because, like... When they try to do Pantone matching, like, they don't always get it quite right. You're sending samples back and forth. It really delays the process. But when you use yeah. RAL, they'll match it every single time, 100%. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the whole point of what RAL was designed for. It was designed for physical things, you know. Uh, everything from, you know, physical uh, bits of plastic to, to um, you know, anything that you can think of that's made that's got a color to it you know monitor surrounds and shelving and you know anything else that you can think of that's what it was made for and that it's not like there's a shortage of RAL colors as well the the, the RAL books are pretty big there's pretty healthy uh, volume of uh, of colors in there it's it's not quite as wide as uh, the Pantone variants but you know, it's uh, it you know it's one of those things yeah yeah just like Heidi Bush says in the chat RAL for pretty much anything physical <laughs> Keycaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Physical. If it's made from plastic, <laughs> RAL is the right thing to look at. And it doesn't really matter what type of plastic, whether it's ABS, PBT, POM, or anything else. You know, plastics, RAL colors are much easier to match. Uh, and uh, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of manufacturing techniques that make it easy to match as well, because each RAL yeah. color has got a certain percentage of different other colors uh, that actually come in physical formats. So, you know, I'm holding up plastic keycaps here yeah. that's uh, um yeah it, it's much easier for them to do yeah, yeah. chances are we're going to get better products moving forward from gmk by using rel that is what they prefer to use so yeah. just keep that yeah. in mind guys <clears throat> Yeah, so, so MP Spears does say Pantone has more colors to choose from, though, does it not? So, so yes, as I said before, there, there is significantly more colors available in Pantone than there is in RAL, but it's not like there's a shortage of RAL colors. There is a significant number of RAL colors. We've not even used 10% of them in the community. You know, it's absolutely massive, massive amount. Um, you know, it, it, it's easier to do um, and we don't need to rely on Pantone. Sometimes, sure, you'll get a set that probably has to have a Pantone in it. Uh, for example, Olivia, Jim K. Olivia, that had to use particular Pantones to get that, uh, the the accent pink color, the, the, the rose gold almost kind of color in there, um, because there isn't a RAL code that, that matches that one. Uh, so, so there will be times and sets where it has to be done, and if it's run through a, a good vendor who's got access to the, uh, the, the Pantone cards and can color match the keycaps to those cards directly or to something else, then it can be done. We've seen it be done successfully, but but for the vast majority of key sets, Rally is just fine. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you, you wanted to move the next topic to the end of the keycap news, right? 
Yeah, let's we'll talk about that at the end because it's not really a keycap set as such. So we'll, we'll come back. Okay. At the end, yeah. Cool. Yep. So next up, okay. we have the Group I finally opening for GMK Merlin. This has been a long time coming. Has been in design for quite a while now, but now Mech Merlin's namesake set is now available in GMK. What do you think about this yeah. one? I really like this set. Um, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I think it's ever since I started to watch Top Pack before I was on the show, this has been touted as one of the up-and-coming key sets. Merlin's been uh, uh, had it coming for a while. I think Cerulean Sage was the original name for it, if I remember correctly. Cerulean Sage, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, and now it's uh, it's just simply GMK Merlin, which is I, uh, a much easier name. It is, but I'm not going to lie, I much preferred Cerulean Sage, the name. I think that's uh, that's way more fancy. But uh, this uh, is yeah 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 yeah. All right, yeah. so let's uh, <laughs> let's let, let's let's preface this by saying uh, we noticed quite a few things already on here. One is that even though this is in group by phase, this isn't necessarily an up to date kit breakdown. Yeah, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm not sure why Kono has uh, has decided to go that route. But um, for starters, let's check out uh, some of these things for just to begin with the. Um, some of these text novelties that seem to be text novelties are not actually text novelties. So, like, this wizardry kit where it says QMK over here, that's actually supposed to be a QMK logo, and you can see that on some of the renders. Um, and this hat is supposed to be a hat, and I'm assuming the orb is supposed to be an orb. So these are not actually supposed to be text novelties. Yeah, I, there, there isn't any, in any of the renders, there's none of the orb, but there is of the hat and the QMK one as well. So when you flick through the renders shortly, we'll be, we'll be able to see a couple of those caps um, as well. Uh, as well as that, uh, Brian is calling out inconsistencies just in the base kit as well. Uh, if you look at the uh, one of the, uh, the, the, sorry, the base kit, there is a row two uh, pipe key for ANSI layout that also says backspace on it. When we look at the renders, that's mod colored and uh, it doesn't have the backspace print on it. So in, in the kit, at the moment, it's got the, uh, the it's got the pipe and the backslash, and it says backspace at the side of that. That doesn't have backspace on in uh, the actual renders of the kit. So I suspect that's not been updated. Um, and the final thing that's not been updated is there is a, a key missing from the uh, UK ISO compatibility. Uh, so I was speaking to Merlin about that yesterday, uh, and he's arranging to have that fixed as well. So there is one key missing, uh, which is the uh, apostrophe at key, which goes at the side of enter, um, just to the left of the hash key that you can see in the ISO kit there as well. Uh, that's not present in that kit at the moment, but it will be present in the uh, kit when it uh, is released. Yeah, so Merlin, get on Kono about this so we can get updated uh, kit breakdowns because, you know, we, we got we to gotta see what we're getting if we're buying stuff, right? Like, you, you can only see some of the novelties in here, like uh, on this TGR board here. You can see the hat yeah, novelty I... down there, but we don't really see it anywhere else. I've just um, pasted the link, Brian. If you if you open that up, that's a picture of all of the novelties with them on. So um, okay, cool. There we uh, go. It's a huge link. I apologise, it's going to break chat, but there you go. There you can see all of the uh, the novelty keycaps in one. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for whoever pasted that into purple chat. Cool. Very cool. That needs to be on the Kono page. It does it, absolutely. It I, I, there's there. no excuse. Yeah, that base kit needs updating. Pe stuff, people always say we don't bash on our sponsors. This is me bashing on Kodo right now, one of our sponsors. This is yeah. a, a, during an actual group buy where people are already paying for this. you got to be able to see what you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Okay, so just jumping back to the actual key set itself, we talked about a couple of challenges with the actual group buy uh, that the Kono just need to fix. But in terms of the key set itself, so if you look at that base kit, there's a lot of compatibility in there. There's even some 40s in the base kit as well. Uh, and at $140, $139.99, uh, you do get an awful lot of bang for your buck. It's up there in terms of the highest prices we're seeing from Jim Kate at the minute, but it is a very, very all in inclusive uh, GMK base set. So you've got your numpad, uh, you've got your standard TKL, full size, 60%, all of that kind of stuff. Sangam bottom row, you can also do uh, 1800. You can do traditional 1800 as well with the six U space bar, but that works. Uh, you've got HHKB support, 65% support, pretty much anything you could want all there in the base kit. That's a really, really strong base kit. Uh, as well as that, you've also got the wizardry kit, which is the novelties we talked about a second ago. Uh, and then there is also an ortho kit as well, which offers a few keys uh, to, to be able to get you uh, uh, up to speed. Uh, and those are $49.99 for the novelties and $39.99 for the ortho stroke 40s kit as well, which are yeah. fairly reasonably priced. Yeah, you got to call it the wizardry kit for the novelties. <laughs> Uh, which, yeah, which again, yeah. the, the summon, the summon enter, uh, it's pretty good. 
The the legend a little too big for me. If you're gonna do text based novelties, I think Just you use gotta, the GMK phone. You right? gotta use the GMK phone. For me, that's what I prefer. Yeah. This this I, I, this I is more it. this is this is more of an icon uh, novelty, which is fine. But yeah, and I don't usually like uh, picture based novelties as such. There's there's the odd one that I do like, but I really really like the Merlin hat on this one. I I think that's really I, really cool. I think I, I genuinely love that. T- for me, this is actually one of the more successful novelties kits I've seen in a while. I really like all of these. Um, my least favorite one is the summon enter. Uh, which is which is kind of ironic since I usually prefer the text based ones, but like just mentioned, to me it feels a little bit more icon. Um, but yeah, the hat, the QMK, and particularly the orb, I'm really down with it all. It's really good stuff. Yeah, the hat is really really cool. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, so uh, C3 Rementus says as well, is there not a novelty for uh, I put on my robe and wizard hat, which is a great reference, and uh, I love you for placing that into chat. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Those are not official? Oh, these are not official. Oh, how, do, how do we not have official novelties for a set that's literally what? being bought right now? Kono, please. That's not official. I'm bad at things. Why did someone send me that and say that that was the, what it was? I don't know. Mech, well, Mech Merlin in chat right now. You gotta set these boys straight. You, you, gotta, you gotta set these boys straight. Yeah, there's Merlin, is Merlin in chat. Uh, disclaimer, someone will not actually summon me. Damn, that's a shame. Those are unofficial renders. Okay, are they close to what they'll look like then? Is, is that what we... Uh, All right, so say? The, 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 good, the good news is the keycap set is in group buy right now. The bad news is we don't know exactly what everything's going to look like, which is really, yeah. really not good. That's a very poor okay. way to start a group buy. So, so Merlin said, yes, the graphics are correct. That is what the novelties will look like. It's just that's not a Kono render. That's, uh, that's one that UB's done. So there we go. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. Anyways, yep, <clears throat> available now. Base kit, $140. Not too Are bad. Join this one, Brian. Is this one for you? or This is a must-buy for me, yeah. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how to I get agree. this. And um, there's, a, there's, yeah. there's another one I was trying to get this one, too, but now I can't remember it. It's too many sets, man. Oh, 8008. I need to get 8008 and this. Probably going to be selling some fair stuff, enough. but you know, that's just that's just how it goes. Yeah, that's uh, fair. That your happens. proxies for this are going to be mykeyboard.eu, if you're in the EU, and TYL. Uh, Tanyu Labs, um, which is run by Lewis, if you're in um, Asia, I imagine is where uh, that proxy is going to be. But uh, we don't see him proxy very many sets, if at all. This might even be his very first one. But he is a very, yeah. very nice person. I've talked with him quite a few times. Super nice and genuine guy. So I'm excited to see his kind of uh, store get off the ground a little bit, too. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so uh, moving on to our last full key set. We do have one more topic after this, but this is the last uh, full key set one we're going to talk about today. Uh, and this is GMK Coral. So there's the link for you guys to take a look at. Uh, so this is a, uh, a new one that's uh, that's only been up since uh, yesterday for me, so the 8th of August. I think that's uh, still the 8th for you guys in the US. Um, and this is based on... Uh, coral reefs uh, and all of that kind of sea life um, stuff. So the uh, the guy behind this, uh, uh, Hudro Thrillson, which is a great name, by the way. Uh, big shout out to that name. Uh, it says uh, that he finds coral reefs to be absolutely beautiful and stunning, uh, but they face a very serious threat from humans. Uh, from destructive fishing to climate change, these external factors threaten approximately 75% of the world's coral reefs. Uh, and as such, he wants to uh, to, to design a keycap set uh, around, uh, around uh, coral reefs to try and uh, support them in that kind of way uh, and what he wants to do as well is to be able to make a contribution to the coral reef alliance uh, from any profits that are made from this group by as well which is very stand up of him and a great con- cause as well uh, uh, for, for the community to try and help um, so again we talked about Pantone earlier on this set is designed around Pantone colors so there are some challenges that we've already covered earlier on today with that uh, but this is uh, a very interesting key set i'll say that it's quite a bright uh key set based around two pantone colors which is living coral and magenta haze what do you feel about this key set brian how, how are you feeling about it i feel like i really like the direction that this is going but we got to have some yeah. better renders um you know we we've seen uh these these are keycaprenders.com right yeah they are yeah totally fine in a pinch great service honestly by pingu but if you're really trying to pitch a set you really need some like a tier renders and uh, like a GMK breakdown for like the kits or whatever, um, and without that, it's hard to know. 
I, I don't really know exactly what this set is going to look like uh, without getting some better renders. So it's it's too hard for me to say, but I really like the direction this is going. I love the coral color, and I love the magenta color. And I like that he's kind of uh, bringing some awareness to um, to this kind of charity that uh, helps out with the coral reefs. So And, and, yeah. he, and he's planning to uh, contribute. I don't know if, he, if that's like all of his profits, some of his profits, whatever. Um, but he's trying to make a contribution to the Coral Reef Alliance, which is always cool, you know. Helping out charities and, and helping yeah. out, you know, the, the environment and stuff like that. Always cool because humans, turns out we're pretty awful. And we like to ruin a lot of things uh, on the earth. So uh, yeah, it's always cool when uh, we don't do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just looking in terms of the uh, of the layouts and everything else here, it's difficult for us to talk about the base kit because this is just the, uh, the KB Render standardized base kit. So he's probably going to tweak and change this a little bit um, to be able to... Uh, uh, fulfill the group buy and probably be more consistent with some of the other base kits we've talked about later on today. So we'll see what that looks like uh, as he moves further through the interest check. Um, I too like the direction this is going. For me, you could almost leave out the magenta haze keycaps. I think this is fine as almost just a two-tone set with just the uh, the coral color and the white. I think that works really well for me. Um, and leaving out those magenta colors, I'd be pretty happy with that set. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's about it as the minute everything else is kind of tbd on this interest check so there's very little else to talk about i think brian and i are both quite supportive of this especially the cause behind it um so we just need to see how this interest check develops over the next couple of weeks yep absolutely all right moving on to this is our final topic of the day oh my gosh yeah Fantastic. finally yeah, there. this is, this finally is there. yeah this is just a little teaser uh wait, why can i load the pictures let's put on here there we go all right, so since you actually have uh, physical prototypes of this, why don't you walk us through what exactly HSA is? So HSA, and I'm going to hold up some of the caps. That's not one of them. Uh, that's the drop cap from the uh, from. Uh, so, yeah, so this is half SA. So I've got some of the prototype keycaps here, um, and I'll show these off more on stream on Sunday, uh, where I'll get right under the uh, the close up cam, and I'll show you up close, and I'll do some comparisons to DSS and SA and GMK and all of that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll spend a good twenty minutes, half an hour, talking about these on Sunday on the standard build stream that I do. Uh, but these are a new profile being produced by JTK in. Uh, conjunction with MyKeyboard.eu, uh, and I think Janglad has been quite uh, uh, involved in that process as well. So these are very, very similar to the SA Sculpt in terms of the shape of the tops of the keycaps where your fingers touch, uh, in terms of the spherical shape of the keycaps and the legends as well. However, they are significantly shorter than SA keycaps. So uh, let me just, in fact, just let me grab an SA keycap just so I can show you. Yeah, they also have a pretty good, at least a render of it, side by side. Yeah, so this is uh, an SA Row 1 keycap. As you can see, that's pretty tall. Uh, this is half SA at the side of it. So as I say, I'll do some more comparisons uh, uh, later on on Sunday. Uh, but as you can see, there's a significant height difference between the two keycaps. Um, so we'll talk about that more on stream, but it, uh, on, on Sunday. But effectively, it's designed to be a lower profile SA keycap set that's easier to type on, easier to use, uh, and doesn't have that kind of uh, uh, increased height that we see uh, with, with SA. Um, it's double shot ABS and it's polished to a glossy finish. Now, what I will say is that I thought that SP's uh, Signature Plastics SA keycaps were quite shiny and quite polished. These are significantly more so. These are really shiny, really smooth, even more shiny and smooth than Cat Alpha, uh, although they, they are really similar to Cat Alpha. Sadly, I don't have the set anymore. I gave it back to Brian when I was in Seattle, but I'd have liked to have compared these next to Cat as well. Um, so really, really interesting set. Uh, in terms of some of the things that are changing on these, these are the very first keycaps that came off the molds I have here. Uh, the, there's only a handful of them. I don't have a full set or anything. Like that. I think I've got about 15 keycaps, uh, all of varying rows and profiles and things like that as well. Uh, I've given some feedback on them. And I'll cover what I've given feedback. There's some slight legend inconsistencies, but being the very first molds, that's to be expected. They are going to be changed and tweaked and uh, reproduced. Uh, and we will be getting a full set at some point on Top Crack in the near future as soon as that's available as well. Thank you, base gods, my keyboard.eu. 
<clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, so I'm uh, I'm I'm excited to, to to get our hands on the full set and type on it and really show that off for you guys as well. So, in terms of uh, compatibility, pretty much everything that we've seen from JTK before will be here. So, uh, they are going to be producing all the keycaps they have uh, in their standard uh, Cherry profile. Uh, they're also going to be improving their Cherry profile. So, their pro Cherry profile is actually called CA. Uh, they're going to be adding ISO uh, and Norda UK keycaps as well uh, for both their Cherry clone uh, keycaps and also for half SA as well. So they'll have uh, full UK and EU compatibility. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to see it. Uh, it's ninja. At the, the, nin the, bright, the, the ninja the that's slicing cap. the SA cap in half is just, that's, that's, that's <laughs> pretty adorable. Idea, yeah, yeah. I, I really like these last two pictures of the album because it really gives you a, a good feel on how this could be. So, you know, like you were comparing uh, against SA, this render is really, really good. The sculpt, yeah. pretty much identical to SA. It is. It um, is. It's, it's just, it's just actually, a noticeably shorter version. Yeah. I've actually got some pictures where I've done that exact comparison. So I will share those on the Discord later on today. Uh, but I've actually lined up some SA keycaps. I know you've seen these, Brian. So I wasn't allowed to talk about these. I've had them for about three or four weeks. And I wasn't allowed to talk about them until uh, until the interest check was released. Uh, but I did take them to Seattle. Brian's tried these keycaps as well. He's had a look at them. Uh, but I have got some pictures that I can share where I've got some SA keycaps lined up. And then in front of those, I've got the half SA. And then in front of those, I've got GMK. So you can see uh, the comparison between the three profiles as well. So they're pretty much the height of GMK, but they have the sculpt of SA. That's that's how I would describe them. And they're lovely and smooth and to type on and shiny as well. Yeah, it looks definitely absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm really interested to try these out. I don't mind the sculpt of SA, but SA has historically for me been way too tall. And that kind of yep. just easily drives me away from it. So I just don't really use it. But, uh, you know, then we had Cat Profile came along. I'm a huge lover of Cat. Um, it's much shorter than SA, and it has a little bit more mild of a sculpt towards Cherry, and uh, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of potential in this as well. So I'm really hoping that uh, you know we get the, a set in a test out, and maybe I can uh, try it out as well. Yeah, what did you think to the few keycaps I had with me, Brian? Did you enjoy having a look at those? And... Yeah, yeah, but it's it's hard to look because you only had uh, what run, one of each row. I think is what you had. You had kind of a. a That's all I took to Seattle. Yeah, I do have a few more here. So I've got like uh, some of the two U vertical end keys for numpads and things like that as well. But I just yeah. took one keycap of each row profile. Yeah. For for me, it's a little too hard to say right now because I I, I have to have a, a full board of it to try it out. It's too hard to know just based on like one cap or two caps or whatever. Um. So yeah, I I have no real comment on it yet. I, just that I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. A couple of questions I've seen in chat. Uh, you passed it. Is HSA row three just DSA? No, it's taller than DSA. Uh, is the row three? I've already tried that comparison as well because that was my first uh, thought as well. It is taller than DSA, so I don't have a DSA keycap to show you. But in 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 the hand, that is the row three keycap. Um, so it, it, it is taller than that. Uh, not by much, but it, it's there. It's uh, probably about as high as uh, the GMK R3. Uh, if you take the highest point of that and put it flat, that's that's pretty much where it is. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Functional in chat is actually pointing out something uh, I think maybe a lot of people, including myself, are thinking of. He says, JTK seems slow, been waiting on Arctic for a while. This is nothing new to JTK. JTK has had delays every single group buy that they've done. Every single one of them. And I'm really curious to see if like maybe that's going to get fixed soon. Because they've been around for many years now, and you think uh, you know they'd be putting out things, um, you know, at the same time to actually get things out in a proper timeline. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's just the way their production line works. Uh, they don't have the same volume of machinery as something someone like GMK does or anything like that. I think it's much more smaller operation. I think it's much more manual as well. Um, but in terms of that, they are working on the molds for their, their Cherry profile as well. So they have been creating new molds and they have been working to get CRISPR legends. I know we saw um, between a couple of sets last year, was it was it JTK Hannah that had was the first set with the CRISPR neater, tidier legends, I think. Uh, so so uh... I think a lot of the delays are because they're working on trying to get better quality keycaps out there so hopefully we'll see that change um my keyboard the eu do have effectively first dibs i'm going to call it on running a key set in this profile uh so they're de deciding whether to do something simple like white on black or do something uh more like the uh the 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 brown and beige key set which i thought looked really nice that they teased as well um so hopefully we'll see some better timelines from them yeah definitely 
Um, do, do we know if MyKeyboard.eu owns the molds for this? Owns the rights to the molds? They don't own the molds, but they've helped JTK develop them, is my understanding from the little bit that I know. Um, and JTK actually asked my keyboard to do the introduction into the community for them and pick the first set that runs in a group buy on these particular molds as well. So they will be open to anyone to be able to run a group buy, is my understanding. Um, if anyone does want to do that, probably best to hit up JTK and my keyboard at EU to understand the, the particular ramifications of that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's just they're going to run the first set. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely. I could, I could, I could be this. wrong on that, but that's that's my understanding. Um, just a couple of other questions that I've seen in chat as well. So, uh, does someone mention does it uh, infringe on SA? Um, uh, I think it was. Uh, uh, I can't find the comment now. Uh, someone, someone mentioned does it does it infringe on SA's kind of uh, uh, that. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, so SA is actually a profile that's made by a couple of manufacturers. You know, you've got Max Key in China who make SA keycaps. You've got um, uh, you've got Creative who have SA molds as well. They do PBT ones. Uh, but the original SA keycaps were designed by Signature Plastics, I think, in the mid seventies, uh, and they're based obviously in uh, they're actually in your state, I think, actually, yep. the Brian, I think, yep. they're in Washington. Uh, not too far away from Seattle. Um, so so it, it, whilst it, it was invented by them, I think there's other companies that have them. So I, it, I don't know what the patent is on those, whether they were ever patented or copyrighted or whatever. The right well, is. yeah, so you, you also have to realize know. that a, a patent only lasts for, was it 20 years, 25 years, 30 years or something not like that? Sure, so but, yeah, you got, you'd have to imagine that if there was a patent on SA, it would be up by now, just like how Cherry had the patent on MX Switch design until 2014. And then now yeah. that patent ran up and then tons of other people joined the party. So it is possible that there is no longer a closed patent on SA profile for signature plastics. Yeah, which is why we see all of these uh, clones is probably not the right word, but it's why we, all, why we see so many other people running uh, the profiles now as well. Uh, just as well, uh, Necroman's in chat. So, uh, hi, David. Uh, good to see you, man. Um, he's just said that, uh, nope, we don't. So, I assume he's responding to the question that I tried to answer before, uh, where the question was, do uh, my keyboard have um, ownership? Uh, are they ownership of the, of the molds for these? Yeah. Uh, so, so, they don't have the ownership as a confirmed there. They're just getting to run the first set because they've been so integral to the, the design and the development of this keycap profile. But I'm really, really, really excited to see these. Uh, just from the few keys I have here, I've used it a little bit as much as I can do to type on. Uh, it, it's not indicative of what a full set would feel like, but it f it feels like it's going to be really, really uh, important profile to the community to me. That that's my current hot take on it. That I think this is going to be quite a big thing for the community. Uh, a lot of people like SA but can't use it because it's so tall. This fixes all of that, and it's really comfortable in terms of resting your fingers on the keycaps. So I want to see more of this, and I can't wait to try this out. Yep, absolutely. Um, speaking about things that I can't wait, <clears throat> let's talk about our sponsors, because we love our sponsors. Also, quick shout-out for our Q&A, guys. We'll be doing Q&A, just like always, after our sponsor spot. So you guys have questions. You can uh, go ahead tag and start, us. Yeah, tag us at Top Clack helps us uh, see them a lot easier and we'll uh, you can actually start doing that right now and we'll get to those just momentarily so starting off as usual we have zeal generation over at zealpc.net slash top clack if you'd like to support us when you're buying zeal products you can find all sorts of things over here primarily keyboard switches that he's known for have a huge lineup you got linears tactiles silent linears silent tactiles so pretty much whatever you want he's going to have you covered they're all pretty darn good i've been using and enjoying them for quite a while now I know a lot of other people have been uh, showing a lot of positive review back on them as well. So he's got uh, some good things going on. Hopefully we see more of that in the near future. So yeah, guys, if you want to support us while buying from there, zealpc.net slash top fact helps us out way more than you might believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh as well, uh, moving over to our second sponsor of the night is Novel Keys. Uh, so the wonderful Mike, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him and his uh, his gang in Seattle. So I think it was uh, Wendell and Corey were there as well. Great guys, yep. uh, fantastic. To They're meet awesome. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. Just just such good fun guys. Uh, but uh, if you do want to support Novel Keys, uh, you can use the code Clackers, which will get you a small discount. That's C L A C K E R S Clackers. Uh, and on there at the moment, you can join a couple of group buys if you're interested in keycaps. They have 
have GMK with Violet on Cream. This is the Heine Bush set that we talked about earlier on today. Uh, a really, really strong base kit for a fantastic price. $115 for that base kit is absolutely obscene. It's such a good price. A really strong base kit. Both Brian and I are really impressed by that. Uh, and the keycap sets looks great as well, inspired by the SA version. If switches are more your thing and you're into switches, uh, the coloured inks are still in stock. The black inks have sadly all sold out very, very quickly as they tend to. Uh, but uh, before the Stoke Show started, the red, blue and yellow inks were still in stock. I'm hoping that that's still the case, uh, that that's not changed. Yep. Um, uh, and finally, if you uh, if you are interested in something a little bit different, uh, then you can pick up either the Yok Polar Pandas, which are the latest version of the pandas in new blue and black colorway, or you can also pick up the Novel Keys Cream Switches, which are in stock at the moment as well. And these are the new PCB mounted variant as well, unlike the, uh, the previous ones, which were. Yes. And also go and buy a Gator Ron, because I've got one here and he's cute as hell. <laughs> Dude, the Gator Ron is so good. It's so cool. It's so cool. I didn't think I cared about it until you had one in the Seattle meetup, but I was like, damn it, yeah, now I gotta buy one. one. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's actually pretty awesome. All right, next <clears> up, <throat> we have Kono.store, who has a few things going on right now. Uh, they have the Max Keys Berserk 2.0 going on right now, that new set. If you're an, uh, a Neon Genesis Evangelion fan, then this could be right up your alley. Hopefully this page loads. Holy crap, internet, please. Um, he's got a few other things going on right now. They have GMK Merlin that we talked about just earlier. Definitely hop in on that if you're uh, you're a fan of the QMK Wizard Mech Merlin in our community, who does a ton for our community, by the way. He is, like, one of the most helpful people in our entire community, so definitely you can uh, help him out and support by buying a set of GMK Merlin. And, of course, they have the Keystone Analog Keyboard going on right now, which is the really, really innovative tech they're, uh, they're finally putting out. They've already well surpassed their goal, but they have some new incentives as well. But, uh, yeah, make sure to check those out. New Hall Effect, style switches, magnetic sensing. This is really, really cool stuff, guys, and there's a lot of cool things that I can actually do. So might not seem interesting to you, but this is the future of keyboards. So make sure to check that out. Absolutely. Jumping over to KBD fans, uh, paste the link into chat now. Uh, so KBD fans, we've already touched on the Polaris earlier on. That's a really, really good group buy that they've got running at the moment. Um, so if you guys are interested in a really uh, low-end price-wise, but high-end design feature-wise keyboard, the Polaris might be something that you want to check out. Uh, in terms of, of uh, other group buys and things that they've got going, they do have the simple JA key set that we talked about earlier on as well. Uh, I think I briefly mentioned it when we were talking about key sets that are running this month. That's in group buy right now on uh, uh, on KBD fans as well. So it's a really nice looking set. Um, if you're not looking for something to group buy, you want something that's more stock and more standard, uh, they do have a ton of kits and pre-built stuff available on the store as well. Uh, so big shout out to the KBD67, which was probably my budget board of the year uh, for 2018. Uh, it's still available. It's going to get rehashed pretty soon. Uh, you should check that out. And, and as well as that, they've also got the second-hand market uh, where there's often quite uh, some interesting uh, pieces that you can buy uh, where things are not quite perfect, but you get a fair reduction in the price. So when I was looking earlier on, there was uh, an imperfect case uh, that was on there. And it had, I think it was $40 knocked off the price just because of a small infection on the case as well. Yeah. Um, so do feel free to go. Oh, there's two on there now looking at the yeah. uh, stuff, stuff that goes on here sells out like that. Because the prices yeah. are honestly like they get low, so low that people just like instantly buy stuff up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and very, very soon as well, they'll have something that I'm looking forward to, which is the uh, the GOK by EPBT 3000 SAT keycaps. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that group by because that's coming soon. So uh, watch the space and we'll cover that when it goes live. But, but another big win from KBD fans. Yep, absolutely. Last but not least, we have Dixie Mech, which you can find over at DixieMech.com slash TopClack if you uh, want to support us when you're buying there. That's an affiliate link, of course. He has a few things going on, starting with 8008, the big daddy key set from him this month, and boy, is this a doozy. I love this one so much, I bought it. Well, I'm going to buy it. Nice. I haven't bought it yet, but, <laughs> but I do love it. I am buying it. But $130 base kit, very, very nice. Love the colorway there. Really good stuff. He has all of his normal array of stuff going on with his apparel, his mecha line of stuff, and his desk mats, of course. Again, DixieMech.com slash TopClack if you do want to use that affiliate link and help us out a lot. Really Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Over to the Q&A. And we already saw a few questions rolling in, but keep them coming. If you guys have questions, use the at TopClack tag so we can see them a little bit easier. Let's uh, scroll up a little bit. 
to where our first question was. Also, shout out to Mithra Art for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Starting us out for our Q and A is going to be Mr. Keebs, the man, the myth, the legend himself. He's nice. asking, "What do you guys think of an idea of designing a keyboard with some Lego interrope interop Interop interoperability?" Okay. Okay, I, I've never used that word. I have been playing with the concept and would love to get your insight on it. If okay, I can post a link. Yeah, you can you can post links. That's fine. Um, yeah, no, I did see this. You, you teased it on Instagram, among other places. I do remember seeing this with the, uh, the Lego top piece. I I don't really know because I I've never been super into Legos as in in my adult life at least. So I don't I don't really see the whole point of having Legos and keyboards, uh, you know, in, interopping. <laughs> But uh, I I don't I don't know is is Lego a big part of our community that the keyboard most people were I, missing out on? Or? I, I I think so because I, I kind of buy bits of Lego and people have often said why don't you stream that as well and I wouldn't do it on the top flat channel but I've been tempted to stream some builds I know Querdenka from the International Kit he streamed a Lego build quite recently Anthony Double One does Lego builds fairly regularly as well um, I, I, whether I would use it or not in a keyboard is probably a kind of different question. Uh, I think there's certainly people out there that would use it. We've seen cases built out of Lego, so why not? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably support it. I'd probably have a look at it, and, and I think it's, you know, no idea is a bad idea until it's proven to be a bad idea. Uh, everything's got a chance, so, so why not? I think definitely take a look at it. Uh, I see you posted the link as well, so I'll take a look at that after the show, and uh, I'll, I'll message you, Mr. Keeps, if I've got any feedback. Uh, Dixie Mech as well. Next question, big shout out saying, hey y'all, want to give away a set of 8008 in chat for the 8th of the 8th, 2019. Let me do some calculations real quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Abs absolutely, yes. I'll one always... Plus one equals... Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we like giving stuff away. That, that That is really awesome, and we do like we like doing that. Uh, I, yeah. I, I had no idea this was happening, though, so I, I, don't, I don't know what you have in store here. Yeah, it's, it's always P scary to have things jumped on. <laughs> yeah, jump, jump in our channel uh, that we've got for you, Dixie, and give us details of how you want to do it while we're answering the next couple of questions. Uh, I'll uh, I'll tag you in that channel so you know where it is. But ping us in there on how you want to do it, and we'll look in there whilst we're going through the next couple of questions. But yeah, yeah absolutely, we, Dixie, that would be amazing. We don't, Thank you. We don't generally pay attention to Discord <laughs> or most other things while we're live. So it, it's whenever someone does something like this, it's always just as much of a surprise to us as it is to you sometimes even more yeah. of a surprise for us so two key sets in one day guys there you go there you yeah go. that yeah epic giveaways man night runner and 8008 like how, this was a this was a good day to tune into the show Cool. Okay. So we'll come back to Dixie in a second. He's typing into our little chat that we've got at the minute. Uh, big shout out to Straight Classy and Fireworm71 uh, for the uh, seven month and two month resubs uh, respectively. So thank you very much for that, guys. We appreciate that. Uh, let's do a couple more questions, and then what we'll, what we'll do is, as the questions start to die away, we'll come back to uh, to to Dixie uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the giveaway, and uh, we'll look at eight zero zero eight for you guys at that point as well. So, next question comes from MP Spears, saying, "What will happen to the keyset market if all of this month's keyset group buys don't hit MOQ?" Um, I'm not a betting man, but I will bet you <laughs> that that doesn't happen. I would suspect that 90%, if not all of the sets, will hit MOQ. Uh, we just seem to be in that space. If we do start to... One of the risks that we do have, and I think this is what you're trying to edge towards, is that eventually we might hit what we call the bottom out of the market. And Brian and I talked about this last week in, in quite some detail. But effectively, what we might do is we might get to a point where the community just can't support that many GMK sets being run. And we might find that some sets uh, cannibalize the sales of other sets, which means that we end up with uh, sets that don't hit MOQ. I think that's absolutely something that could happen. Whether it's something that we need to expect to happen soon or not is probably a different question. I don't see it happening anytime soon. And if it does happen, well, it just means that the designers and the vendors will need to get together. And I know they already probably have these conversations between who's running what and where and when, and there's probably a better view between the vendors and is out in the community that probably happens already that will just need to be tailored a little bit more and sets will probably uh be spaced out a little bit better and that's just something that the vendors will arrange between themselves so i suspect that's where we'll end up if things start to fail yes sorry I've, I've okay been, I'm Brian, setting, Brian's I'm busy up, sorting out stuff with dixie I'm so i'll, I'll carry, you carry on yeah. yeah you carry on doing that i'll run through the next couple of questions uh next question from llama farmer says finalizing my choice of parts for my first build is a dz60 hot swap a pcb plate or pcb mount uh so 
the DZ60, you can use either uh, plate or PCB mount switches, as far as I'm aware. It shouldn't matter for that one at all. You should be able to use either of, uh, of those types of switches in there. Uh, and you should be able to use either plate mount or PCB mount stabilizers for that as well. I would recommend using PCB mount stabilizers, though, rather than plate mount ones. They're a little bit less rattly and a little bit nicer to use. So I'd uh, recommend that you uh, have a look at that if you can. Uh, post up if you've got any more questions on that or hit us on Discord as well. We'll happily discuss that with you. Okay, I think I have this giveaway ready. Okay, should we do the giveaway now, or should we answer a few more questions first and uh, suspend it a little bit? I, I don't know. What do you want? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Let, let's go through a few more questions and, and build some more hype. Um, but okay. uh, if, in fact, what we should do is we should put an announcement uh, and just do a quick uh, tag on Discord. So, um, eight zero zero eight giveaway on stream in let's say three minutes. Yeah. And I'll do a, tag, a cheeky at here. We don't do them often, but we'll do a cheeky at here as well. <laughs> there we go. Oof. In before we get uh, yeah, loads of loads of messages, people saying, don't, don't tag at here, don't tag everyone. But hey, we're doing yeah. a giveaway. It's, uh, it's a live giveaway on stream that's really surprised us. We've done one already. Um, so if uh, that hopefully I'll get a few more people in to watch as well. Yeah. Okay. So we'll give them a couple of minutes, we'll answer a couple more questions, and then we'll do the giveaway. Brian's all set up and ready to run that. Uh, next question comes from Boy314. He says, Top Pack, do you guys have any advice for new community members looking into uh, run either a key set or a board group by? And what are the most important do's and don'ts? Um, so I can probably talk a little bit about the, 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 the process I've done for group buys for boards. Brian, what do you, do you have anything you want to say on, on either of those? I've, I've never ran a group buy. So from a, a runner's standpoint, I don't really have a whole lot of advice, but I mean, obviously we spend literally every single week talking about interest checks and group buys and what we do and do not like to see. So I think yeah. from that standpoint, uh, it's pretty much the same uh, kind of stuff. We like to see very full information packed um, interest checks. Uh, don't don't half-ass them. I mean, you're, you're trying to gauge interest on a product. You want them to have the information about the product. Um, as many as, as many pictures as you can. And obviously, renders are good. If you can have physical prototypes of stuff, um, that's a really big plus. You know, you've tested stuff before, uh, do different runs of design and protos and stuff like that. Really, really yeah. big deal. Um, that that yeah, that's probably the most important thing to me. Like you know, it, it, it's it's you know, you're trying to build interest through an interest check. Like you want you want to really put it out there. Don't half-ass it. Yeah, I think the, the couple of things I'd want to say on this is if you're going to do a, a key set, my big piece of advice would be reach out to the vendors and talk to the vendors. They've got experience in designing base kits. They've got experience in designing add-on kits. They've got experience working with renders uh, on people who can produce them. They've got experience working with graphic designers and people who can produce novelties. They've got all of the setup there with GMK. They know how to get in touch with the right people. Reaching out to a vendor to talk about your key set is, is probably one of the things you should do early on if the community like it after you've posted an interest check. Um, they'll also give you advice on whether what you're trying to run is going to work or not you know there's probably a lot of key sets that we don't see because people approach vendors first and they're like you might want to think about how you position this and the colors you're using and the choices you're making before it goes uh, in terms of a board the biggest single thing i can say is once you've got a design for a board get a prototype made it will teach you so much about your design, whether it works or not whether it's something that other people will want get it in front of people take it to a meetup show people how it puts together and you know how it's put together uh show people it on a build stream or something like that get someone to build it for you if you want to see an audience you know get someone who's got some experience and some feedback uh or to give you some feedback on that um running a board without having physical prototypes is not something that should happen these days so those would be my two big pieces of advice definitely Okay, right. are we giveaway ready now? Are we, I think we've we given can, them three minutes. We can, we can do that. So basically, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to swap over to um, the news viewer so people can see what I'm doing and know that you know we're not cheating, obviously. <laughs> so basically the way this is going to work is there's going to be a keyword. It's going to be 8008 on 8-8. Eight -8. I'm going to put that uh, in chat right there. Obviously, Top Clack not eligible to win, but I'm just going to put it so you guys can see it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reset the eligibility right now. And go ahead, and you can uh, you can enter enter that um, that tag now, starting now, and then in a few minutes we'll uh, we'll roll it. We'll say we'll say five minutes. We'll get we'll get a really generous five minutes. So eight forty five Pacific, 
I'll go ahead and roll it. Cool. Uh, just while we're doing that, and we're waiting for you guys to enter, a uh, big shout out to Talisman gifting the tier one substrate class that I covered before. I didn't realize it was a gift uh, when it popped up. So thank you very much, Talisman. We appreciate that um, as well. Uh, and uh, Sir Fortuna as well. Uh, thank you very much. Subscribe for three months as well. Thank you very much for that big love, man. We appreciate that, dude. Heck yeah. Uh, okay. the, 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 well, losing some of the older questions as I, well because of all the zero zero. I, I, I was about to say maybe we should we should hit up one more question while we uh, while we wait for this. I can't so, scroll back far enough to catch any. Don't of worry, the previous I, ones. I, I am I am I'm, I'm far <laughs> enough back. Hopefully it won't cut us off too too quickly here. Uh, Ten strong asking, have either of you tried a board with a hot swap PCB that screws into the plate like NK sixty five slash thermal? Curious if you think that would remove some of the issues with hot swap options. So a hot swap PCB that screws into the plate. A lot of those actually do that. Tokyo 60 screws into the integrated plate. Um, yeah. M60 screws into the integrated plate. And the Tofu wind keyless screws in, and HHKB, screws into the plate integrated. So uh, I'm actually typing on one right now. This is my this is one of my break-in boards. It's just the Tofu wind keyless integrated plate. But it does have a PCB hot swap that screws into the plate. Um... I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of the issues. I mean, the, the problem with the hot swap sockets that we have right now is it's easy for people to accidentally break them off because they're just very yeah. lightly soldered on and people, instead of putting pressure against it, people will just push switches into it without having any kind of resistance from the back. And that's kind of uh, unfortunate, so people can break it pretty easily that way. Kale hot swap sockets, probably the best hot swap socket we have on the market, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect. It's really not. So I don't. Know, I, I think we need to, I, we need better hot swap solutions before anything else. Yeah. in my opinion, I, I would probably agree. And I think I, th I think part of that challenge is just the way that there's so many different sides pins on MX switches because you've got everything from pandas that had the original covers on to to others as well. So I think a better solution for hot swap boards is is absolutely what's needed. But as we move away from MX style pin out on. Uh, on, on switches to more optical type switches. Uh, I know we've talked about the silo switches quite a lot as well, Brian, that type of thing where it's not necessarily uh, using traditional uh, uh, pin-out process. Um, I suspect we'll see more variations of hot swap and that'll become easier to adopt into the community as well. So definitely something I want to I want to see. Definitely. Uh, make okay, sure you get... To... You got, we got about two more minutes before I roll this giveaway. So let's, uh... Yeah, how many, how many eligible people have we got at the minute? Because I think we've got 190-ish viewers. So. There's currently 156, but it kind of updates in chunks, so it could be more than that. Okay, It's, it's not so guys, 100% you... live accurate count. Right, okay. So, guys, you have got a, a small amount of time if you do want to get in there. We do seem to have more viewers right now than eligible users, so if you do want to get in there, uh, 8008 on 8-8, eight -eight, get that uh, typed into chat, copy and paste it off someone else and paste it in there, um, and uh, make sure that you're eligible for that. Yep. Also, everyone's eligible, including mods, by the way. Mods, regulars, subs, users, all eligible. Um, the only Down people the that can't win it are, uh, you know, Top Clack and <laughs> Yeah, you know, presumably Dixie. Well, Dixie can't win it. That that'd be unfair. That, that'd be Dixie, pretty bad. We, yeah, yeah. If it rolls on Dixie or Top Crack, yeah, we'll re-roll. We'll re-roll. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, uh, I don't know if we got it already, but shout out to Fireworm who did sub with Twitch Prime. I don't know if we got that one. Excellent. Thank but, you. Uh, I think we got that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. All right. I'm not going to answer another question yet because we only have a few seconds before I have to roll this. So. I'm yeah, just gonna so I'm hold your questions for a second, guys. Yeah. I'm just gonna wait. Uh, <laughs> see if you guys you know actually want to win this. We're up to 164 eligible users now, which is a pretty, yeah, but pretty the, large percentage of our viewers. But 200 viewers, it's yeah, it's it's, it's up well, there. Well, this, this is how live giveaways work, right? Like you can't. There's not a whole lot else we can do. We just we we've been talking about it. I've been showing it on stream for several minutes now, so <laughs> there's, there's not a whole <laughs> lot fair, more we can do. Fair. Uh, G-O-M, uh, very much uh, thanks to you for the two months worth of sub. Current on a one-month streak says hi. Uh, hello to you, good sir. Make sure you're in the giveaway if you're interested in a set of 8008. <coughs> All right. Okay. We're now at 845. <laughs> are, we, are we ready? Do I do I roll it now, guys? Do I yeah, hit, do roll I hit, it. Do I hit this it. roll? Do I, do I just... should, we, should we do a countdown? Should I, should, countdown? I, should I tease a little bit? You can give me a countdown if you want. Sure. All right. Should we, should we start five, four... Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. Uh, my man, Mart, is going nice. to be the winner. Very nice. Uh, he He's actually someone that uh, has been watching Top Clack for a while. 
Sub- yeah, my since Monopoly the beginning print. of 2018. Wow, there very, you go. very so thank nice. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I know. I already know he's uh, part of the Discord. If I'm not mistaken, he is. So yeah. Can, so uh... if you reach out to 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 us and and or Dixie, uh, we'll make sure we get all of your details to, to Dixie. If you can get them to Dixie yourself directly, uh, he'll be waiting out for that uh, for that contact, uh, and we'll make sure we get you your set of eight zero zero eight. So congratulations, man! Well done. That's really really cool. Yeah, that um, is that is awesome. Thank you again, Dixie, oh. for. Uh for that giveaway very two, nice two giveaways in one show right yeah two giveaways. yeah well night, night the night runner giveaway is going to be open for a week and we'll post that in an announcement yeah. so guys if you uh maybe you, you you're bummed that you didn't win a set of 8008 you still have a set of night runner that you could potentially win so there you go easy stuff good job guys my man Mark. absolutely yeah like yeah, Jay said, he, reach yeah, out to, yeah you can you can reach out to dixie and if dixie tells you to f off or something reach out to us Although I doubt Dixie would say it. <laughs> <laughs> Dixie's like, why are you PMing me? Uh, either way, get, get a hold of one of us, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely get things sorted out for you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so Clavier is asking for the Night Runner link. Uh, I'll share it again just before the end of the stream, uh, but we'll also put it in the, the VOD description. We'll put a pin up, and we probably will tag at here or at everyone as well. Yeah. Uh, I know it's the second time, and we did cause Cinnamon Boots to leave Top Clack uh, just a minute ago when I posted uh, about the 8008 giveaway. Uh, but it, stuff like this, it really is worthwhile uh, letting everyone know that it's happening. Um, and you'll have, as Brian says, just about a week to enter that. So thank you again to the key company for for giving us that set to give away as well, uh, as well as Dixie today. Two giveaways in one day, man. That's so cool. That's, that is such a cool thing. That's big. Um, and, and a lot more coming at the end of the month for our uh, three-year three anniversary. Yeah, exactly. Too. We've got a load of stuff coming A lot up of stuff well. giving we away this we, month. We, we can't share us. everything just yet, but we are making sure we give you guys as much as we can and give away as much as we can. Uh, okay, so I'm just pasting that link in there now, Clavier, so you can uh, have a look at it. That's the Night Runner giveaway as well, if you want to enter that. Yes. All right, let's get back to a couple more questions. We're actually coming up on the three-hour mark, so we're going to head out pretty soon, but there are still a couple pretty genuine questions um, that I am still cool. I still have up that haven't disappeared yep. yet. So I'm gonna, okay. we're going to get a couple more. Yeah. Antonio Margheti is asking, thoughts on gasket mounts? That's a very kind of a vague question, but at the same time, pretty easily answerable by us. I think gasket mount is, generally speaking, superior to any other mounting style. Um, yeah, gasket mount has kind of uh, evolved into being more of a blanket term in our community now, and now we use terms yes. like isolation mount or uh, burger mount or whatever. There's there's kind of there's a lot of uh, sub methods of gasket mounting that are all kind of different, but they they often kind of result in the same thing. But yeah. yes, I do think they are pretty much just better than everything else. It provides you a, a softer typing feel, a little bit softer, regardless of what plate material you're using. And uh, by and large, I think the main primary benefit is going to be the sound you're going to get a much cleaner and much more precise sound because the uh the gaskets the rubber whatever you're using is going to really absorb the reverberation and you're not going to get it across the uh, keyboard you're going to get it from the gaskets instead yeah just just to expand on what brian said using gaskets is uh you've kind of got two ends of the spectrum as you said you've got sound improvement and, and you've got flexibility or, or softening of the bottom out and you can kind of, it's a little bit like brake bias in a car you can tweak whether that's front or rear bias you can tweak it towards either side of that and it's kind of a spectrum of different things uh, it, it, i agree with brian it's probably my most preferred type of mounting and i don't want to badge them all the same way because there's there's a very big difference between doing say burger mount and true isolation and then something like the the the, the pin type mount that we've seen on the board as well so there's very very different ways of implementing it uh all of them seem to be uh an improvement at least in, in part above the traditional mounting methods we've got um i certainly prefer it to what was the staple of top mount just 12 months ago where everything was top mount i still prefer it to that uh and i think there's a lot more to come i've seen some recently Zond that showed me something the other day that's coming soon which is really really impressive uh, and again it's something that you're going to really enjoy but I can't talk about it too much just yet um, so yeah so, so so I think gasket is is probably a bad way of describing all these different mounts because it, it, gener- it makes too many things generic uh, but in terms of all of the different opportunities it brings it's definitely improvement for the community yeah absolutely um, uh, shout out to Jeff Leppard as well for the uh, for the four months uh, yeet he says uh, so thank you very much <laughs> for that four months of service I appreciate that dude thank you thank you um, Orange Josh or Orange Josh says uh, he asks you both have done so many sound tests on various typing types of mounts which type of mount do you think makes the best sound signature 
kind of like what we just t- touched on, I would say most versions of gasket mount. Just because the yeah. gasket really does clean up that sound, even with something like top mount, which is still very good. Um, you can still get a little bit of reverberation just because it is always going to be metal on metal. But with gaskets, you have uh, you know a lot softer, denser material yeah. in the way to just absorb all that sound where you only hear like the sound of the switch. You only hear the sound of the board. You don't get any kind of reverberation or, you know. If, if, if I had to pick one of those implements, because as we said before, there's multiple different ways of implementing gaskets. There's no one way. If I had to pick one of those for the way it sounds the best, I would pick what's been dubbed as true isolation. This is the same as what we see in the Kepler, the Kepler 65 and the J01. Those are the only three publicly known boards that support it at the minute. Uh, but that is what I would class it. There's some very, very close versions for that as well, such as the uh, the Bauer, uh, the way the number one, uh, revision one does, uh, does its gasket integration as well, the same way as the Polaris does where the plate is isolated above and below again that's very 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 close second the very very similar mounting methods and the idea is to get the plate in the case to not touch at all uh, and uh, then one uses an air barrier and one uses a gasket barrier to prevent any sound around the sides as well so very similar uh, i think if i was to pick uh, any type of particular gasket mount it would be those two uh, and the feel of those very much depends on the design of the board around that so yeah yeah definitely uh, we're going we're gonna to speed through some of these questions in the interest of time. Um, Urban the second is asking all brass think, uh, meaning the think 65, I imagine, or all brass volcano 660. Uh, for me, volcano hands down. I like the design more than the think 65. Probably agree as well. Yeah, uh, I agree with that too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think yes, the second question as well. I'm not sure where where we are in questions, but I think Urban the second. I'm pretty well. far back before the giveaway still. So. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll let you catch up then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So IZ Fan X is asking, how do you think half SA will compare to Cat seeing their like between high profile and Cherry? Hoping this isn't a duplicate question. Uh, it's not, but uh, we did talk a little bit about it a little bit. So, uh, how, how do you how do you feel about that compared to Cat? Uh, I think it's going to be very similar to Cat, and uh, I, I think I'm going to enjoy this profile as much as I love Cat as well. I can't stop playing with the keycaps, keep calling them to play with them. Uh, and I'll do as much of a comparison to other keycap profiles as I can on Sunday on stream, on my build stream. Uh, sadly, I did have to give Brian his uh, his Cat set back, so I can't compare to those, because uh, that's back in Seattle now. Um, my view is that I'm, I'm probably going to, and, and until I've got a full set, I can't, 100% say this, but my hot take right now is that if you ask me today what my favorite profiles are, it's, it's GMK or Cherry, uh, then it's Cat, uh, and then it's everything else underneath there in various different orders. I think this is going to take second spot, and it's going to be those are going to be my top three in that order Cherry, Half SA, Cat. I think that's where it's going to go. Until I've got a full board, I'm just doing a hot take, though. I, it, it's going to take a while for us to get a full keycap set to, to definitely prove yeah. that, but that's where I think it's going to end up being. I mean, the, me, the sculpt is obviously a little bit different. I think Cat's, uh, Cat's sculpt is a little bit more aiming at Cherry, which is a little bit more mild, whereas HSA is uh, a little bit more like SA, just cut in half, basically, which is a little, not an aggressive sculpt, I would say, but more aggressive than something like Cherry, which is pretty subtle. Yep, I'd agree, yep. All right. Okay, next question, Brian. Uh, we have, yeah, yeah. Uh, Axot is asking, since you guys own so many desk mats, do you clean them? And if so, what method? Uh, yes. Yes. I, I I actually throw them in the washer. Yep. Um, and, I, and I wash them like I would my clothes. And then um, I throw them in the dryer. I know I shouldn't throw them in the dryer. It's probably not the best method. You should hang dry them. That's what I'm suggesting to you. But I throw them in the dryer because I'm a lazy piece of shit <laughs> i i give them to the wife and she sucks out uh but no jokes aside um i they, they go in the washer on a 30 degree wash cold 30 degrees celsius or whatever that is in Fahrenheit. double it and add 32 70 ish something degrees um i i just put them in the washer on a cold wash not on a hot wash uh put a small amount of detergent in there let it get rid of any stains and then i make sure that i hang it evenly when i dry it as well so the, the other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to end up with kinks and bends in your desk mat after it's done so when you ha- you are hanging it up make sure you're hanging it over something that doesn't have a bow in it so if you hang it over a washing line and it's weighted on where it is the, the washing line will have a bow in it and it will stretch the the mat so when you put it over something you should put it over like the edge of a table or something that's got a square edge so it's not going to stretch or distort the mat as well i've learned that from experience so that's just my take on it too Okay, next question. 
Yeah, I'm scrolling through. I'm I'm in, amidst the giveaway portion of the show right now. Oh right, okay. <laughs> um, fr- amidst all the entries, Frostfire asked me to show the um, my tofu again, which is just it's like the cyan color. I, th- I think they call yeah, it cyan. Nice it's it's pretty nice. This is just kind of like my tester beater board with a hot swap PCB, where I try out switches. Right now, I actually have um, some new unreleased switches right now by TTC in here. Um, they're not publicly available yet, but TTC sent me some to review, and I've been using the linears in here. Actually, not that bad. Breaking them in for some lube. I'll do a little bit of a write up on uh, the website very soon with those. Actually, for anyone that's actually curious. Yeah, yeah, they were alright when I tried them as well. Oh, right. The, the other ones, that, the other ones that there weren't so nice. Were the other ones tactiles, I think, if I remember right. The other, yeah, the other ones. I, I'm not super fond of the other ones. The other ones I would kind of describe as um, MX Browns that are smooth. Right. Yeah. But no, the, ta- that's probably the tactility is like not that interesting to me. But the linears, a little wobbly, but very, very smooth. Um, but yeah, again, another time. I'll, I'll have a write up for that. Uh, cool. Okay. Still trying to. So many people entered. Holy crap! I'm still trying to catch up, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. G- Geo. I don't know if we got it, but Geo M subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you again for that. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah, we did get that. Yeah. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, here's another question by Urban the Second. What would be the most you would pay for a keyboard in a group buy? Any material, style, etc. The most we would pay for a keyboard. Um, I think the, the most. I think oh, I think after about the four hundred dollar range, you get really diminishing returns. And that's fair. Being someone that really, really emphasizes like value, which is why things like the Polaris and the Sirius are two boards that I think have a ridiculous amount of potential. Um, I really try to stay in that low lower price br- bracket that still have like really good feature sets and have a lot of that trickle down uh, feature set from higher end boards. But uh, yeah, I I would say probably. I would pay six hundred dollars for a group buy board, but I don't wanna, so I usually won't. But yeah, sure. After about four, I, I really start to question a lot of things. Yeah, I think, I think the most I have paid is probably somewhere around the seven fifty mark, the eight hundred mark, somewhere in that kind of range. I think anything above that, like I, I'm not sure I'd ever exceed a thousand dollars in cost for a group by board as brian says there's very very much diminishing returns after a certain point and that probably is around the 400 dollars mark right now um in terms of some boards depending if you get one-offs and custom made boards and so prototypes could be more expensive than that depending on what you do and how you're doing it especially when you consider moqs for certain things like pcbs and stuff like that so and designer fees and you know all sorts of other things like that you, you might end up paying more for a one-off and i'd consider that but in terms of group by board i think thousand dollars pretty much a hard limit for me right uh, aftermarket, maybe not so aftermarket, probably a little bit different again. Uh, it depends on what it is. But I think $1,000 is probably probably up there for me. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Frisco Mel asking, did you all check out the KY01? Sorry if I missed it. Yep, we did check it out. Yes. That wasn't our new stock. So if you want our thoughts, you can definitely hit up the VOD after this is over. Cool, yeah. J-Shuff. And uh, 500 Dixie Bits as well from J-Shuff. Yeah, from yeah. J-Shuff. Thank you so much, man. That is very kind of you. Dixie Bits. That's just fun. That's kind of fun to say, actually. Dixie bits. Dixie, Dixie's, Dixie's bits. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. no that's, just, that's an interesting no, do, you, do you have to get so lewd with it? Come on. I just, it's Dixie bits. I wasn't lewd. I could have been way more. That's what, that's what, that's what Garrett's wife calls him. Dixie bits. <laughs> Functional is asking our preferred plate material. Uh, carbon fiber is probably my favorite right now. Palm is my current favorite. Uh, Tyson asking thoughts on the S7 Elephant. Have you guys used one? I hate the front lip. It's in the way. I have not seen one in person, <laughs> but I think you have built one, right? Yeah, I built one for Ahab, which was a 23-pound brass monster. It was stupidly heavy, uh, stupidly difficult to build. I trapped my fingers under it a couple of times, but I fell in love with that board just because it was so stupidly heavy. So uh, big shout out to Ahab. Thank you very much for letting me build that, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, in terms of the board itself, I thought it was pretty usable. Uh, it felt very much like the extent to use in terms of the height and the angle and the bezel across the front and stuff. It's probably a little bit more reaching across. In fact, it's probably very similar to the HB85 when I was using yours in, in Seattle, Brian, the HB85. It's kind of very similar with the front bezel. You have to reach over that to get to the keycaps. Uh, it, it's very much that kind of feel. So, yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I have no experience with it, so I, I defer to Jay on that. Uh, Thumper22, subs with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Hi- yeah. Heidi Bush with an interesting question that I... I, <laughs> I I've got an answer for this one. Uh, our, you know what? All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to do it. So he's asking for, yeah. for 
to uh, F slash Mary slash Kill, which is a, a popular kind of silly game that uh, we play out here in the U.S. a lot. Um, yep. He's asking both of us, so F, I'm not going to say the F word on uh, on stream, but F, Mary sleep or with. Kill. Let's put, let's put my sleep with. Yes, let's so see. sleep with, Mary or Kill, uh, between Huey, uh, a.k.a. Man of Interest, and Mike of Novel Keys and Dixie Mech. Wow, that's... that's I've, I've got an answer for this. Uh, I don't know if you need some time to think, but I'm, I'm happy to go. Uh, um, what? Uh, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll Go 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 let's, ahead. Let's, go let's, ahead. Do, let's, go let's ahead. do let's do it together. So so which one would you sleep with? Because I think if I was going to pick one for that three list, it'd be Dixie because he's so cute and Dixie's bits right. So yeah, you know, Dixie would be the one I would sleep with. I'm gonna oh man, I'm, I'm trying not to drop a sponsorship here, but uh, I think I think if I'm just gonna sleep with someone, I think Huey's more my style. Okay. If if I'm just having a one night stand, I. I don't know, man. The 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 Asian men. I, I if I, if I were gay, I'd probably be into Asian men. <laughs> so, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So I, okay. I, so that's the first one. That's who. That's who we would sleep with. Um, and yeah. in terms of marry, I'll let you go first. On this one. Which one of those three would you think is marriage material? I gotta marry Mike. <laughs> he gotta Agreed. marry Mike. One hundred percent. One hundred percent agree. He's which, definitely the marriage. Which means type. I have to kill Dixie. <laughs> And I'd have to kill Huey, which is terrible. But, oh man! Yeah. I but that's 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 a pretty tough one, though. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's I don't want to. I, 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 I like. One. I really like all three of these people. I don't want to kill any of them, but I guess that's part of the game, right? So yeah, I, well, I, and that's, that is, that's what makes it fun, right? That's what makes it. Fun. Yeah, so, I mean, so, but, so yeah, so. But I could marry Dixie and be okay with it too. But I mean, if if I have to kill someone, I he, Huey is more my fling, and Mike is you know my my spouse. So. Yeah, see, see, I'm, I'm the other way. So Dixie'd be my fling, Mike would be my spouse. So yeah, sorry, Huey, I feel really bad saying that, yeah. but in, in before you know. drop sponsorship from Dixie back. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, at least I'd sleep with him. So you know, well, maybe that maybe that account for something. Yeah, it, you're you're probably better than me too. So he's 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 really really good. <clears throat> <Ooh. laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, two QT is asking, what stains do you need to wash out of your desk mat? Um, Lube. <laughs> lube uh i actually eat at my desk too because i'm a heathen i eat in front of my keyboard no. I, I literally I have a, I, I have I a really sandwich do. right next to me right now but i i keep oh, looking no, at it because i want to eat it on stream but i'm like no i can't eat on stream i've got half a chocolate brownie i was eating earlier on um but i usually make sure i've got a bowl or something like that. i wouldn't eat across the, the desk like that now um so yeah um all right a couple more a couple more rapid fire before we uh before we head out here uh, Witzellers is asking Zeno story, so I guess the the story with the Zeno or Zeno, whatever you want to call it, uh, right now yeah. is that uh, people are actually receiving them. They have been shipping, but uh, some of the units, I don't know if all of them do, but I've seen one that was particularly kind of bad on the inside. They have uh, hook marks from the anodization, really not that uncommon from anodized products, but uh, yeah. at, le at least one of the users' boards was uh, pretty bad. And then I saw another two that like weren't nearly as bad. So I don't know like if what kind of range we're dealing with here, but it seems like some of them, at least some of them, have some internal uh, anodization errors. Basically, I guess you could say. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't seen anything on that. I'd seen a few boards of chips. I haven't seen any uh, of the hook mark features or anything else. But I have been kind of fairly absent this week due to work. And yeah. Like that, so I don't have mine uh, yet. Hopefully, I'll get mine soon. Yeah. Okay. Them, I didn't uh, get one. So. On. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Tef Tefram, Tefram, when will they be public? I don't know uh, who he's referring, referring to. to. Yeah, yeah I'm, not we, sure. I'm not sure. Because of the giveaway, we're kind of weirdly in chat right now, where we don't know exactly what everyone's referring to based on when we were talking about it. Yeah, so apologies. So, if you want to repost your question, though, if we've got time, we'll get back to it. Yep. Uh, Pork Chop Express his feelings on Superloop. Uh, for Sabs, it's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. not a bad. Thing for Sabs, it's yeah. pretty good. I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. use uh, the. The synthetic grease on switches. So they, there's actually multiple versions of Super Lube. Super Lube is just the brand. Um, they yeah. do have um, an oil that I know Wodan likes to use a lot on switches. It's very, very inexpensive. I actually have some here. I haven't tried it yet, though. But apparently he uses it on switches. He loves it. He uses it for, like, bag looping and stuff. It's very, very cheap, so probably worth a try. Um, but, yeah, as far as the synthetic grease, pretty good on staff. It's effectively just dielectric grease with uh, PTFE in it. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. So I mean, yeah. it, it's it's pretty much interchangeably with dielectric grease in my experience. Okay. 
Uh, uh, next one then, Frisco Metal again. <laughs> uh, FMK bottom rows. So this is the same question that Heidi asked, but about bottom rows with HHKB, Winkeyless, Win- and Sangan. Winkeyless is Sangan. Or no, I guess we'll. <laughs> this is kind of a weird question. You can have the one new key. So it's, it's either with or without blockers. It's Sangan with blockers and Sangan without blockers, right? So I All think right. I, I, I would have to say uh, in order of preference. So. Um, my guilty pleasure on this is to have Winky with blockers, even though they're just aesthetic. I really like them. Uh, then it'd be Sangan and then HHKB yeah. last. But I do like all of them. I just think it would be that order. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, I would F F Winkyless. I would marry Sangan, and then I would I I kill HHKB. And I it's I, I like HHKB too. So rough yeah. rough question yeah. for me. Um, yeah, same same as well. Yeah. Frosted Flax asking was equals zero PC covered in the show? No, but there's a reason no. because the group buy is launching next week, and we didn't really want to cover the interest check this week and cover the group buy next week because we had so much on our news doc already. So we'll just talk about it uh, the group buy when it goes live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did miss a question from Mr. Sniffles. Did Top Clack cover the Rune one six the Ion one six five by Rune? Yeah, it's the Smith and Rune keyboard. We did cover it before. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a build stream soon of the prototypes. I think that's happening. Um, so yeah, we yeah we've we've covered it and we'll cover it when it goes to group by as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Grundy subbing with Twitch Prime for eleven months. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you, dude. Yeah. And I think I'm still scrolling, still scrolling. Oh, okay, I'm officially caught up in chat. There's one one more. Tefram is uh, expanding. Is asking. I was asking about the switches you are using, you are now using that are not public yet. Oh, uh, I don't know a date on when they will be public. I was just told they're not released yet, but they will be releasing on the consumer market soon. So yeah, there is that. Cool. Okay, and MK Tyson says, "Did you guys cover Sarah Clack round two? If not, no worries. We didn't. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, Tyson. We didn't cover that. Uh, but we do know that you are running a, a group buy for Sarah Coating Services, uh, which you've now renamed oh, as Sarah Clack. Which is good. Is that is that what that is? Yeah. So okay. Sarah okay. Coating Services, Sarah Clack. So yes, uh, do go check that out, guys. Uh, if you want to paste the link, Tyson, I'm completely comfortable with you doing that in chat. Yep. Uh, I've had a couple of boards off Tyson. I've actually been building one of them this week on Sunday, uh, so I'll be able to show you guys off the quality of uh, of Tyson's uh, Seracoting work. So yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. I think that is that is it. <laughs> that is it. We are finally caught up, guys. Finally. It's, caught it's, up. It's, this yeah. has been the longest show we've had in. A been a long time, long, right? Very... Have, have, Three hours and ten minutes. Have we had a longer show since you've been with Top Clack? I think the longest one was three hours and thirty minutes. Yeah, when we had that week where we had the twenty-seven GMK interest checks. Um, so yeah. Wow, that's crazy, man. Oh, all right, guys. Well, we're gonna head out and uh, hopefully watch Heine Bush's uh, stream. <laughs> yeah, Heine, Heine, post in chat and tell us what time he's starting that because I, I do want to watch that. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see what you say uh, and who else is going to be on the show with you. So uh, uh, do post that in chat. Uh, just in terms of what we've got coming up, guys. Uh, just a, another reminder that the uh, the Night Runner uh, group by is uh, group by is, is well the group by is open, but the giveaway is open for another week as well. So we'll share that link again on the. Uh, the Discord server will share it on the YouTube video. Uh, it'll be everywhere we can paste it so you guys can join that over the next week. Uh, in terms of upcoming streams, watch out for our stream on the 29th, which is our three year anniversary, uh, where we're going to have a ton of really interesting stuff. We're going to have more giveaways. We're going to have uh, some really, really good fun times. I'm really looking forward to that stream. Uh, in the nearer term, I've got a build stream on Sunday where I'll be building my Exempt. Uh, that has been uh, seracoted by Tyson. So if anyone's interested in, in Seraclack round two, uh, I can show you guys what the quality of that is. I'll also be doing an in depth coverage of half SA keycaps compared them to GMK, SA, and anything else I can get my hands on, BSS, whatever other keycap profiles I can share with you, uh, just to show you guys how nice these keycaps are uh, and uh, give you my more direct thoughts on them. Uh, and I'll probably write an article at some point next week on uh, the detail behind that as well. Um, and then as soon as we get a full set, we'll cover that too. Uh, Brian, I think you're doing uh, a stream as well at some point soon, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to try to do a stream tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing. Um... I'll probably be either, you know, rebuilding something or attempting to build something. But I'm also going to be checking out the uh, Cam Starry Night because I'm really anxious to put this on a board. So we'll probably put that on a board. I'll talk about it a little bit. You know, it might just be a stream where I'm kind of just fiddling around with some stuff, just hanging out and talking. It might not be a super long stream, but uh, I kind of want to just get to a few things and, you know, 
have it be a chill kind of hangout session, like I like this my casual good. streams. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Uh, and then Sunday, you have the the build stream. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that build stream actually because uh, the extent is actually to uh, to to match my. It's been circulated to match my Datsun as well, so it actually technically matches my car. It's pretty close. Oh, wow. The cars. The, 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 the car's slightly more metallic than the, the Cerakote would ever get to yeah. be. Uh, but the fact that it matches is kind of nice as well. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, the only other thing that we should probably do right at the end is uh, if I send you the link to Heine's uh, Twitch, we should uh, we should give him a, uh, a is boost. He live right a, now? I think he's just about to go live. So, uh, Heine, if you want to get ready to go live, we'll... Uh, uh, we'll do the thing where we can rage you and anyone else who's interested in staying up yeah. and watching. I think I have a uh, motto hosted anyways. Oh, do we? Oh, okay, cool. So. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll just put the link in our chat for you anyway, and then you can uh, you can do the the, the slash raid uh, command. Yeah, well, he's not, he's not miss... live, so we can't read him yet. Oh, uh, right, okay. okay. Well, if, if, if you're live in the, in the next minute or so, we will do. Uh, Techfresh, you missed the giveaway for 8008. Yes, but there is a giveaway for uh, Jim K Night Runner, which is in group by right now. Uh, we'll be pasting the link into the announcements straight after the show, so do watch out for that as well, dude. Yes, definitely. Well, anyways, I think that is uh, a good enough time to round up for the show. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I know the show ran long. I apologize if that's an issue. I know a lot of people like that. Some people maybe not so much. But uh, yeah. we definitely appreciate you <laughs> just hanging out for the ride. And hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed yourself and enjoyed that 8008 giveaway. And the uh, Night Runner giveaway that is still open will be posted in the announcement channel right after the show, the Discord. Look below the stream. You can find our YouTube, our Discord, join all that stuff. You can know what's going on. You can uh, be a little bit more in tune with all the giveaways and stuff that we do. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully I'll catch you guys tomorrow. And then Jay will catch you on Sunday. And, of course, next week, same time, same place, we'll be back for our main show. Absolutely. Right, See you later, guys. Peace.